All right. Now we're good. Well, Pat, I got to see your fingers up close and personal to the computer. <laughs> well, that's what the fans live wanted to see as soon as we went live is <laughs> Patrick's fingers coming right at them up close and personal. Hey, it reminds you that it's a three-dimensional world. Really, though? Is it really? Are we not in any, were you not in our own type of matrix? Is it really a three-dimensional <laughs> world? Um, yes. I'm pretty certain yes. about that. Yes, it is. Let me rearrange my screen here. So the two of you are at the top of my screen. No, it does remind me of something uh, my, my younger sister once told me about a friend of hers. Um, she was crazy? No, she said that a friend of hers had went and uh, saw Avatar in the theaters in, in 3D. And... Uh, Where is this going? My sister asked her friend, so did, did you like it in 3D and everything? And her friend said something to the effect of, Oh my God, yes, I wish real life could be like that. <laughs> and I think I told my sister, can you, oh, give that's hilarious. Of, can you give me the name of this friend so that I know never to speak to this person ever? That's that's hilarious. And it's like I, I know what she I know what the person was trying to say. <laughs> but come on. <laughs> yeah, that's a that was that was a little a little bit much there just uh yeah. just a tad just a tad so how you guys doing we're down one person isn't jeremy have like family stuff doing yeah. this weekend i think yeah i don't know I'm, why he, i don't know why he texted and said he's not going to be on it we know that <laughs> right and I, he was I just said, he was just said, reassuring that's all just reassuring. I, also, I, I also said the three of us doing this so it's like i thought it was understood that he was not part of the three and I also think this uh, <laughs> this sets a uh, a milestone, if you will. Is this not the like, like we've done one without at least one without me? We've done at least one without AJ, and we've done a one, yeah. at least one without Joe. Is this not the first one without Jeremy? Yes, ah. I think it is the first one. So there we um, go. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. It is. Yeah, it's, so, uh, uh, so now we've done at least one now without each of us at one point now. So. So Pat so just, is gonna just the three jabronis. Pat, That's Pat's all. gonna go. Pat's gonna go see it on Friday, and Jeremy's gonna see it in three months. So <laughs> even after all the buzz, there's so much buzz about this movie. It's like maybe Jeremy will go see it then because people are gonna keep talking about it. So maybe that'll like give Jeremy emphasis to see like, all right, maybe I need to go see this one specifically. So. Pick your kids on Christmas Day, Jeremy. There you go. See, I, um, th go this is uh, but between between Jeremy here uh, and my sister, uh, it's like this is perfect discouragement for me to ever consider having kids if I ever get married, <laughs> <laughs> because I go to the movies pretty frequently. Once you have kids, you can't do that. Really. Unless you're going to see cartoons. Yeah. So it's like, geez, am I willing to sacrifice my movie going time to have kids? Oh my God. Nice. You, listen, you can. I, I, it's, I, there's I, a certain I, point where you can. You just got to wait I, several I, years. Hey, I, I'm just being blatantly honest here. If it, if it ever like, came to that again, that is something that would weigh heavily on my mind. I'm not fucking joking. So, also, of course, all the anecdotes that I hear from my sister, one of my coworkers, about just the joy of raising children. So, um, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. So well, when we have blessed. one, my, co my, my, my coworker has two, my sister has four, uh, you know. So, yeah, I mean, the higher the number, the worse it could be, I guess. You know, I don't know. I don't the, more, one. the more That's complicated. Totally it yeah, it just yeah. it's still pretty. It's just still pretty funny for my sister how she went from having one to four in the span of less than two years. So 
uh, after having had one for what was it like, like five and a half years, you know. So, Joe, when you uh, was your theater sold out? Mm, almost. Almost. This is the yeah. first movie I've been to since the pandemic that was packed. Like it was like there was every it was sold out and. Um. I will say that when we got to the theater, there was a lot of cars there, but the theater we go to that's close by, they have like, I think there are 12 movies playing all day. So they have like three theaters going with this movie, like back to back to back. This was like, because it kind of spread it out. This was like the Star Wars first night crowd when I went. The people were cheering and going crazy. So, oh, oh yeah, they, they definitely cheered for. A couple of occasions um when people showed up and yeah when they showed nature. when they showed andrew garfield the people went crazy and when they showed toby and when they showed once i figured out that that was daredevil like that part got a big oh. yeah too. <laughs> so when, when you told me about that and i saw in the beginning i was like oh i i i, I guess you didn't you didn't watch the netflix series though. i did not somebody told yeah. me i actually should watch that one he said that that one's actually good Daredevil one is cool for the Netflix. In yeah, case it was super. You, it, in, it was case cool. you get, in case you didn't get the spoiler warning, we we're talking spoilers. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Oh well, I can't can't contain myself with spoilers. It's uh, a little little challenging. It was so. It was it was really really good, and it was really cool. Like just the way they, like, the the part where all three of them are like on top of the thing when they're gonna fight when all three of them are like on there together that was cool. And oh yeah, there's there's a lot of cool stuff in that when, movie. When Ned was like Peter and everybody answered, and then he's like Peter Parker and everybody answered again. <laughs> <laughs> he's like the computer. It was funny. You know, it, it was it was super. It was really a good movie. And of, course, and of course, that's not the only place where they brought the uh, the Netflix Daredevil series into the MCU now. So, because nope. because of, of the end of Hawkeye with Kingpin. Yep. Yes. Super stoked about. It. And Wednesday's the season finale for that. Mm-hmm. Got, I, to I, get sure. that, got, to, got to get that done so we can make way for Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. And yeah. Pat, they they have like four other like they have at least three other star wars series that are done so like they're just gonna when are we getting mandalorian when are we getting obi-wan like they're they're like these ones are done already (laughs) well i don't know if they're finished i mean i think some of those are still filming Uh, i thought obi-wan was done i've not heard that um i mean it doesn't much matter i mean i'm sure they'll all be coming out over the course of 2022 so, you know, we shall we shall see. But yeah, it's uh, going to be interesting because I do feel like they kind of re- are rebooting like Spider Man essentially because nobody knows who he is now. <laughs> mm. it, 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 no, it, it, it definitely seems that way. I guess the uh, fresh the start. Question, so, yeah. The bigger question, of course, will be. Um, do they kind of take him out of the MCU part of it now and just... Well, they still this. know who Spider-Man is. They just don't know it, that Spider-Man's Peter Parker. So... Right. Well, no, what I'm saying, though, is will they separate him from a time from the MCU characters and focus on him interacting with the Sony-specific characters? You know, which so far, basically, you know, you know, Vulture and Morbius, and Venom, and whoever else they may decide to throw into it going forward. That, that's that's kind of what I'm saying. Like, well, they kind of like, well, they kind of de-emphasize the MCU aspect of it to make it more, like, specific to, like, the Sony movies. I don't know. It, it's challenging because you still... It's hard because you still have the Doctor Strange movie, and you know that's that's multiverse, you know, centric. And I don't know. There's, there's still, there's still ways for it to be incorporated. To be honest, I mean, you know, at some point, maybe someone will find out that Peter Parker is Spider Man. It seems like a semi reboot, but not really. It's, no, I it's think weird it's... because the multiverse is the way they're whatever they're going to do with it. There's just so many different directions. Like they could just hash it back or kind of bring it back to a certain aspect too. So we'll kind of see where it goes. And so real quick, 
Mandalorian started filming in October. Oh, okay. So it's not done yet. There's no way they're done with that one yet. Yeah. Obi-Wan's done. That one's mid-filming. And I think Ahsoka starts March or April of next year. I believe. Because I think they're still trying to cast certain people for that show. I think they're bringing more of the Rebels characters in live action for her series. So we'll see. And then the big news, you know, they signed uh, um, there's going to be a uh, Han Solo and Chewbacca series now. I did not see that. Yeah, that was announced this week. I did they, see said that's likely to be, they said that's likely to be animated. Oh. Yeah, well, they Harrison Ford signed a uh, contract to do it, yeah, so did, but just for voicing. I didn't read all of it, but uh, he did sign, and it's a series for Disney Plus. So let's see which way they yeah, go. Yeah, I, I, I think that he's going to, uh, like, like there might be uh, some live action appearances where they said the speculation was they would do de aging stuff like they've done on other people, and I'm like, we're well, gonna have to do a lot on old Harrison then. <laughs> um, but. Uh, I think that yeah, what I well. saw about that Han and Chewbacca series is that that would be animated, which makes sense because you can't if you to try to de-age somebody for the course of a whole series, it's like you may as well just animate the whole fucking thing. So, you know, that makes sense. I'm kind of surprised again that he's still willing to do it now, but it's like, all right, you know, I won't complain about it, you know, so. Yeah. I mean, he's he's signing on, so he's there. <clears throat> They've convinced him to do something that interests him or he wants to do. So, yeah, you know, maybe uh, he's the point where he's like, "Fine, I'll just finish out the rest of my career doing a hot solo and Indian <laughs> No, I yeah. I feel like they should come out with Funko Pops for Toby's Spider Man and Garfield Spider Man. <laughs> I feel like where's the Funko Pops from this movie for those two now? So, well, they I'm sure they'll some time. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm sure they're coming, you know, and maybe they'll be in that maybe that thing that they're releasing that Spider Man one that's in pieces. Maybe there'll be four villains in the three Spider Mans. Mm, That could be to do the four. Yeah, I mean, that could be they pick four of the four from this movie. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I mean, there's there's gonna be a, a Toby and a uh, Garfield one soon. Definitely see it. And I like the slight nod. I thought it was funny how Jamie Foxx is like, I'm sad you weren't black. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we were going to see Miles, like we were going to see Miles and they were, were going to throw the computer generated one in there somehow. Then I was like, oh, they're going to try to get him in here. <laughs> well, towards the end too, like when they, it cracked, the whole thing yeah. cracked and you could see images. I was like staring at that, trying to see us. Like I, you know, you see certain villains like, oh, it can't be just all villains. And there's gotta be, there's gotta be miles somewhere up there. <laughs> if there was, I missed it, but I was, I was looking. That's for sure. We've got to watch it in slow. Oh, <laughs> I know. No worries. Someone will, somebody probably has it and they'll be like, took pictures. You know, list, uh, when we were at the movies, there was a, there was a kid. Who, oh, sure. Yeah sat in front of us in like the handicap section like halfway through the movie and he was like taking like random pictures and like texting people while he was during the movie and whatnot so i won't be surprised that's the kind of kid i'd be tempted to slap upside the head and go watch the fucking movie and stop the bullshit well you know note to self sit behind pat at a movie and just be a dick <laughs> you will never sit behind me at a movie <laughs> That's true because Pat sits all the way in the back, right? You said that, that, right. that, that, that has become a non negotiable for me. If I go to buy tickets to see a movie and there are no seats available in the back row, I'm not going to see that movie. At I'll, that point. I'll sit in the row in front of the back row, but that's it. I don't like it, anything back besides that. Like, I always get back row seats too, but I've sat in the row in front of there in circumstances, depending like if something got sold out and I didn't have a choice. So yeah, no, it's not it's not it's non-negotiable for me anymore. So I actually do not like sitting in the back row. I don't like watching a movie and seeing 
heads in front of me. Even if it's the new setup with the reclining chairs, I just don't like seeing people's heads. Well, we sit yeah, in, yeah. we sit like when the, the main floor and then there's like the handicap in the first row up, just because the way the movie theater is like that row or the second row, like I'll sit there, preferably the first one. So like usually no one's in front of me, but then I, I just see the screen. It's like perfect viewing for me. Maybe it's because I'm 6'2", I don't know, but it works better for me. And they're so spaced apart, I could care less about the people behind me. They don't bother me. Well, see, that's that's kind of the interesting thing that I found. The theater I've been going to over the last month or so, uh, the one that's closer where my dad lives now, uh, it's a it's a smaller theater. There's only 10 screens, and it's 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 a mall theater, if you will. Mm, okay. uh, it's, it's on the end of a mall. And it's like, wow, I didn't think these existed anymore. Um, but all the theaters... <laughs> That I've been in so far at that one are a bit smaller, but they are all reclining seat theaters. Yep. And there's been enough space between, because again, every time I've been there, I've been in the back row. There's been enough space between the back row and the other rows, and just that there's like the little kind of like walls, if you will. Um, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about been very difficult to actually see anybody's head um uh, you know i think like actually when i was like getting up from my chair at the, the, the movie i went and saw today um and i kind of was like looking straight forward at the at some of the credits and then i was just like something like caught my eye like in front of me i'm like what the hell is that and then i realized it was a guy's head and there was a guy who was still sitting there so i was like oh okay. i I, I told Joe, I think it's hilarious when I go to a Marvel movie and I see people leaving like when the movie's over, I'm like, dipshits. How do you not know at this point that there's at least two scenes in the in the credits? Like, how do you not like know that? I don't care unless you have are you gonna piss your pants. What are you leaving <laughs> for? <laughs> yeah, that's 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 the only <laughs> reason. <laughs> that you have is like you know like oh my god i just i you know i just can't hold it anymore yeah, I, I, I had to know. pee really bad and i had to fucking sit there and hold it i'm like god damn it yeah <laughs> so it's uh it's 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 not a comfortable feeling i'll tell you that um but do you do yeah, the twisties like it, it 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 does amaze me because it's it's like um like this past week was, uh, I know you don't care about this, AJ, but this past week was the 20th anniversary of the first Lord of the Rings movie coming out, um, mm. which it was kind of like, God damn, it's been 20 fucking years already. But I just remember seeing Fellowship of the Ring the day it came out. And when the movie ended, hearing more than a couple of people as I was like getting up and leaving going, well, that was it. And me wanting to go, dumbass, you do know there's two more fucking movies coming? Awesome. You do realize this is part one of a trilogy that there were three books that this is based? I'm like, oh my god. Huh? So I just I just found that I just found oh, that funny. But like, yeah, it's, it's it's kind of the same thing where it's like, yeah, you, you, oh, you don't realize that there's post credit scenes coming. I know. So they've been it's, in literally it's... they they've been in literally every Marvel movie since the first one. And and 90% of them have been important. The one where they're sitting in the restaurant wasn't really important. And then there was, no, one. That, was, that, was that was just a fun little post script. And then there yeah. was one at the end of one of the Captain America movies where they fucked with us and there was not really a scene. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pat, did you did you see the post I did with the, the Lord of the Rings rap? Yeah, my sister pointed that out to me. Um, that shit was funny. hilarious. Pretty, pretty funny, though, a little cruel um in in some aspects like uh now obviously like when they well obviously when they were making fun of pitch perfect and twilight that was because they got anna kendrick to participate so that was obviously like tongue-in-cheek but some of the criticisms that they leveled at some of the other movie series and that it's like in order to write that about those movie series you have to have at least some belief in it so like when they called out the dark knight trilogy for being like capitalist propaganda i still (laughs) i still i still resist that interpretation of those movies but when they're 
complaint against Star Wars was Jar Jar centric again. I just was like, no, just keep it up with the fucking Jar Jar <laughs> shit at this point. Number one, and I, I said that the it was just year, funny, man. Yeah, I know, but it's like you know, you're also not. I mean, first of all, if you're gonna, if you want to criticize the Star Wars movies now, find a reason to bitch about the sequels. Really, at this point, rather than the prequels. Yeah. Um, but also it's like you're you're also just doing that and you're throwing like all the Star Wars movies into one thing then because I'm sorry, as much as I love the Lord of the Rings trilogy, it still is not superior to the original Star Wars trilogy. Plain and simple. It was just I I, I watched and I just like the little small little podcast. I just found it funny. It was it was just hilarious overall. Who was I forget which rapper it was it's like I forget. He's like, I'm just in this because of something. And it was just, just it was just making me laugh. It, it was so. Yeah, I, I can't remember who that was either. But yeah, I, I was. I, I I did get it. it was Method Man, I think, or something like that. Uh, yeah, it was. It was just funny. It just made me laugh. So I was like, I gotta repost this. This is hilarious. Yeah, it's, 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 the, it's the kind of thing where it's like, um, yeah, it was like, it were always almost reminded me of like the old like Marshawn Lynch, you know, press conference. Was like, I'm just here so I don't get <laughs> I'm just here to do this so I don't get fined and get you know the money taken away from me. It was funny though. It was cool. Definitely so. I'm gonna have to go watch ahead. I'm I'm gonna have to go oh, watch some it. asshole revving his engine and speeding off outside. I'm gonna have oh. to go like watch the what if episode about Doctor Strange Supreme maybe now. <laughs> You're gonna have, have to watch a cartoon. It. Holy shit. I still <laughs> yes, yeah, you I still will. Haven't... I still haven't watched any of the What If series. Uh, maybe I should get on that. Because that's that—that that was definitely Doctor Strange Supreme, right, Joe? At the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was. This is. This is the first time where you like you, you get two end credit scenes, and one's like an end credit scene, and the other one's like a trailer. I was like, whoa! <laughs> like this is this is going on for way too. I was like, holy shit! Like we're actually getting a legit trailer here. I was like, holy shit! This is like going on forever. And I'm like, yeah, I'm down like, with that. That's what my sister told me. She told me that the second scene was really more of a preview of the Doctor Strange movie than like a scene, like a like a post credit. Yeah. So it was legit, like a trailer for the movie. And, and I like, said, well, the, I said, well, yeah, I said, well, that is the next one coming. And I said, even though they delayed it a couple of months, it still, I think, is the next one on the schedule. So, yeah, I think. Well, uh, Morbius comes out in March, right? But yeah, still. No, that comes out in January, but January. I consider that part of the Sony verse. Yeah. So well, it's not, so not weird. Not it's it, it, it's so interesting. Yeah. Some I, I it's kind of one of those things where in the Morbius trailer you see he says Venom, but yet you have Vulture there. Yeah. So I'm kind I'm kind of wondering like how those two are in, going to interconnect. Like how did Michael Keaton's character get there what well, he's technically part of the actual mcu so we'll see we'll see what happens when the movie comes out we'll see how they play that i'm glad you liked it joe it was really good i really enjoyed this movie this is that spider-man was the best movie i saw this year for me <laughs> personally so i I, kind of, enjoyed it. I I kind of feel like they the the whole love arc between peter and mj felt a little tony stark and um yes pepper um, pot Pepper's like arc in a certain way, just with a different twist at the ending. We'll see, we'll see where that goes, but it seemed very kind of similar in certain aspects. I don't know. I, I super enjoyed this movie. This is definitely my favorite. And I, well, one, one, one of my biggest problems as far as anything between Peter and MJ is that I'm not a big fan of Zendaya. I like Zendaya. I don't. I'm kind of in the middle on her path. So. I don't get it with her after seeing her in five or six movies now at this point. So I, I just don't. There, she has this like aloofness to her, which I feel she, like she is kind of make, aloof in this. Doesn't, her, doesn't make her doesn't make her very compelling. Her, her like character this. in this movie was kind of aloof. I did feel like that's a good way to describe her character in this movie. I felt like she was like kind of aloof. That's a good word. I, I felt like she was that way in the first two Spider-Man movies. I felt she was that way in The Greatest Showman. I felt she was like that a little bit in Dune. Um, you know, in, in Dune, you know, like the way they depicted it is like, you know, she's kind of like all mysterious because most of the movie she's just like a vision and all this other shit. But 
um yeah i'm just I'm not there with her yet. She can still change my mind, but right now it's like I basically just look at her and I go, why is everybody so on her? Like she's like I, the next big thing. I'm kind of with you on that path. So and like I said, she can she can still change my mind. I'm not gonna, you know, not go see a movie because she's in it, you know. So we'll see. I like her. Well, you are wrong. Don't care. <laughs> I'm not gonna change my mind. I even seen Dune yet. I haven't watched it yet. I was gonna go on HBO Max to watch it, but I had taken it down before I got a chance to watch it. So I'll just wait. Yeah, like I just, watched, I just I just watched King Richard before they took that down. Um, that was good. I like that. I I was I was surprised by how much I liked that. He, and he was he was kind of a douche. Their the father was definitely a kind of a weirdo in real life. I mean, I think they did a good job of portraying him as being. Yeah, they, I, I think they I think they left out some unsavory aspect of his character, but they did at least leave enough stuff in there about him to pretty much remind you, perfect. This guy is not, you know, and he is a little treat. He was obviously really hard to deal with. It's like not you know saying that you know like the coaches are like perfect or anything, but. I can see just how miserable it could try to be to be trying to coach these girls, but having to deal with him, you know, <laughs> over the shoulder constantly. So, uh, Marine father. Yeah. And at the same time, though, they, they did also pretty much show that he, he wasn't forcing them to do anything they didn't want to do. Like they wanted to play tennis. They wanted to be out there. They wanted to be the best and everything. Yeah. So he wasn't, so he wasn't, pushing them to do something that they don't want to do. So he wasn't a stage mother or in this case, stage father like that. And there were, <laughs> when they, when there were yeah, well, and they did contrast that by showing scenes of other parents, you know, berating their kids after they got beat. And, you know, these tennis benches when it's like, they're 11 and 12 years old for fucking Christ's sake, you know, so it's toughness. I, yeah, well, I, not just that. It's like, I, I, Parents I'm say too money. much. I, I, go too I'm, putting far with this, it, I'm putting all this money into this. I expect some results, you know, and all this. It's like, yeah, you know, you're not letting Those them be crazy ones. Kids. I don't. No, nope, yeah. nobody really like. I don't remember because I didn't watch the. I, I've always called them the Predator Sisters because I didn't watch. Nobody was really watching back when they were little, or or like even when like when she had the match against Sanchez Vicario, but that was shitty when she like had to go to the bathroom or whatever, and she did that to like change the like flow of the match. That was really crummy that she got away because I'm sure that that really happened. So it, that was it, crummy. It, 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 it did. But the funny thing is, I, I read an article where losing that match still bothers Venus Williams to this day. Because she let herself, as she put it, get thrown by that yes. long break. But the funny thing is, too, uh, I don't know if you know this, but Aronso Sanchez Ricario is a piece of shit in real life. Oh, like she, she is? She's apparently about uh, about to go to jail for, for uh, fraud. Okay. Like, her, like her and her ex-husband were accused of like, uh, you know, like fraud and like tax evasion and shit. So she's looking hmm. at like a... Uh, a significant jail sentence it sounds like so it's like ah uh, you know once a piece of shit always a piece of shit i guess but i also read i also then in reading about that also read some things about her childhood and it sounds like she had one of those like kind of stage mother aspects so maybe that's one of the reasons she, why she ended up being kind of kind of a shitty person then as it turned out but yeah i also thought it was interesting that they kind of chose to end the movie on a down note you know in that they show her losing that match and everything but obviously the whole uplifting thing was that there's a whole crowd of supporters waiting for her at the end um but Fun. it was yeah, it was it was it, it hit like the standard like feel good biopic notes but it also did some things that i think those types of movies generally try to avoid um and i thought it was better for that i it was it was cool when he like was talking to serena and he said she was like the, the first step of the project you're going to be the better of the two like that part was like was cool when he told her you're going to be 
the best of all time or whatever. Like that part was kind of neat that he took her to the side and said that to her. So that's, I mean, kind of the way it turned out. So no, it is. It's just, it's just that the movie was more about Venus than it was about Serena kind of. So it focused more on Venus. So I have yet to see it, but I hear it's good. I've always, I've always liked Venus better than Serena. That may or may not have something to do with the fact that I once talked to Serena Williams and she was a total bitch. I don't know if it was the Serena Williams, but it was somebody named Serena Williams who kind of sort of over the phone sounded <laughs> like Serena Williams. But I didn't understand why Serena Williams would have had a prepaid cell phone. So <laughs> I probably wasn't her then. <laughs> that's why that's that's why I'm almost certain it wasn't her. But again, goddamn if she didn't sound like Serena Williams. One of those things where um, you know, people call it with a issues with a prepaid phone, will use whatever name they can so they don't have to rebut divulge the real name. <laughs> yeah, especially since there was never names on those accounts. Sorry, we're never. going back into our T-Mobile days here, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, never, never names for those accounts. Nope, never. You say John Don't for all we care, and no one gave two shits. Still, so. yep. And That's after all, that is, that is the whole point of buying a prepaid cell phone. So, as countless Law and Order episodes have told me, <laughs> got that prepaid flip phone. Pat, 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 I, man, I can do all my criminal business. I, uh, I I have to pick on you, Pat. What what happened to your college basketball team today? Kentucky didn't, the- didn't didn't see a minute of it, so no clue. I mean, uh, I'm not going to blame the fact that their opponent was changed just yesterday because they kind of sort of should have been preparing for for that since the the beginning of the week when they first started uh, saying that like stuff was going through UCLA and that their coach was testing positive and everything but yeah i mean i, I already know carolina is not a contending team this year they're like they're an AI team you know but they're not they're not going to get out of the second round of the tournament so i don't know um, kentucky that good that, I'm surprised that they the score was surprising to me in that game today well, I mean, let's see. Uh, Kentucky shot 54.2% from the floor, including eight out of 15 on threes. Uh, Carolina, and they took 72 shots total. Carolina took 53 shots total, making 43.4% of them and were one of 13 from threes. So there's one reason. Uh, and Kentucky just absolutely killed them rebounding 44 to 26. That's a second chance shots for offense and whatnot yeah so that's uh i would say it was a lot of that kind of stuff yeah just from looking at the box score you know so uh yeah probably that advantage in the rebounding uh yeah 17 to 6 offensive rebound difference um you know yeah it's big so they they're taking a hell of a lot more shots and they just made them more so it's a good recipe for winning Oh my God! What do you? Oh my right. God! Uh, a, a friend, one of my Yankee blog friends, just posted or reshared something on Facebook. Which I'm going to have to show to you. This is going to involve me needing to turn the phone around facing the screen. So you're going to have to tell me when you can see it. Not yet. Never. Now Never. we can. Oh, <laughs> Luke Skywalker. <walk-a-walk-a. laughs> that is actually funny. I like that. Yeah, I mean, that I'm is, a sucker for Star, I'm a sucker for Star Wars and the Muppets, and I had not seen that one yet. So, Who's that? Waka, waka. that is funny. Waka waka. Uh, so, Dion Sanders in his bowl game Trump today Walter. got uh, out coached hardcore today by the old guy. Well, before we get to that. AJ, how do you feel about one of your favorite Florida State alums fucking over Florida State? If it was anybody other than Dion, I would have issues, but it's Dion. So, I mean, he's the reason me and Joe started watching Florida State, so he gets a pass. Okay. I was curious about it. I am also, of course, curious to see if this possibly opens up any floodgates to um, 
other FCS teams stealing uh, top ranked recruits like this, I would have to say no until somebody other than Dion is able to do it. But very interesting. So, yeah, I think <laughs> I think this won't be the first time Dion does this either. I definitely think Dion will have other options. Um, yeah, it wouldn't option, surprise other me. chances to do this as well. Yeah, it wouldn't at all surprise me to see Dion do it again. I because the reason why I'm wondering again to see if um, anybody else at the FCS level is able to do it is because I it was kind of written almost as like an afterthought, or maybe I was just reading too fast. But somebody kind of like writing up like the uh, the impact of it and everything was saying that like the uh, the uh, NIL money uh, may have played a part into this too. Well, I'm I'm sure it did. Well, right. But so the the whole thing again is that um, we really need to kind of see if somebody else is able to do this before we can draw that conclusion. I mean, right now I would say it was still more, I'm going to go play for Deion Sanders, even though these kids I think are at this point are not old enough to have seen Deion Sanders play in the <laughs> NFL. At this point. But no, um, I still think it's more of I'm going to play for Deion Sanders than oh, I'm going to have this great opportunity to make this NIL money. So that's, it's something, it's something to watch as uh, it goes forward. That, yeah. that could, be a, could be a seismic shift. So That quarterback that transferred from Ohio State to Texas 100% manipulated the system. He went to Ohio State, signed some NIL, made some money to sit on the bench, and then he went to Texas where all the boosters are pumping all that money in the system now. So he completely manipulated the system that kid did already. So yeah, he's made out when he really hasn't even done anything yet. We'll yeah, see what he, he does in Texas. Do shit. Yeah. Yep. Let's see what he does well, in Texas. Well, if the old saying goes, it's nice work if you can get it. Yeah, the, the whole NIL thing is gonna be very interesting because you know it's giving these kids opportunity to make money. But at the same time, I think these people who are assigned these kids to NIL contracts have to be very careful, like who they are. I, I thought it was very interesting. They, you know, what's what's sign a kid to an NIL contract that's sitting on the bench? I mean, your star quarterback in Ohio State's not leaving yet. So why would you sign a contract, sign a kid up that's not even starting? It kind of doesn't make sense. I've seen some of that with some of the college football players, at least, where they're some of them aren't, you know the top guys of the team. So uh, I'm just a little curious to where they're going with this. It's not regulated. Yeah, we, we'll see how much we'll yeah. see in a couple of years. If it gets we're, like right. hardcore regulated by the <laughs> shitty ass NCAA, who can't fucking fix their college football system now as it is. Yeah, I was so going to say that, something that, else. Uh, they'll fuck something else up. Yeah. I was going to say that's, that's the whole thing. It's like, do you have faith in the NCAA policing this no. shit properly? No. First of all, they, I mean, they'll try to they'll fuck like, it up. Well, right. Well, first of all, again, like they've always, like everybody's always said about the NCAA whenever it comes to them trying to do shit as it is, you know, they don't hold subpoena power. Well, yeah. <laughs> this is kind of the same thing. So, I mean, hey, kudos to the kid for making money. I mean, he made out. So, you know, <laughs> on the flip side of things, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of the NIL stuff. I'm, I'm not, I'm, a, I'm against it actually. So I, I mean, I I've come to the conclusion that these kids deserve to get paid something, but I don't know if the NIL stuff is necessarily the way to go. That's because that's mostly mainly because I don't have enough of an understanding of it as of yet. Um, I got to do some more research on it. That's some details but, of it. Yeah. And, but, <laughs> and like you said, I'm, always leery of boosters pouring money in to it, it's one thing to donate money to the university so that they can build new facilities or spend more money on recruiting or whatever you know it takes to to get the kids to come to the school but you know having seen some things at Notre Dame when I was there um watching the old ESPN 30 for 30 on SMU back in the eighties and, you know, just any other time you see anything about a recruiting scandal, the Terrell Pryor shit or whatever the hell it is. It's like, they're 
plenty of people are out there who are completely unscrupulous and don't even really care if they get caught because they're certain that their money will buy them out of any hot water that they might get themselves into anyway. And Damn generally new. speaking, that's what happens. <laughs> yeah, it'll never go away in any, any type of aspect. The boosters yeah. have a lot of control over colleges anyway mm -hmm. for in multiple ways. Um, yeah, it's, it's once again, it's it's something that I said to you about, uh, you know, the uh, the state, the, the the sport stage mothers, you know, we're giving you all this money. We expect a return on our investment. <laughs> of course. Of course it is. I still think that the, the, the power five need to break off and do their own ranking system and college football playoff and expanded and all that shit because no matter what happens with Cincinnati do we see them beating Bama oh no I just hope they make it as competitive as they can for as long as they can it's their chance but at the same time you know they're still not going to give these schools that much of a chance even with some of the, all these schools realigning and going to different conferences and all that jazz it's it's going to be helpful but it's it's still going to be a struggle they're not going to get some of these schools the credit they deserve that's the yeah, well, part. yeah, that's that's the thing too. Is that um, you know Cincinnati will be a Power Five school in a couple of years, mm -hmm. and if so, yeah, you know. mm, I think it might be next year. Actually, I think it actually I happens. Think it was, I didn't think it was until twenty four, but I, I think not, it's year. I think it's the year after. I I haven't really looked to be sure. I know in the next three years was like. Eight, nine, ten school switching and all that jazz. Oh, yeah, I, thought they were, yeah. I thought them and the other school were going next year. I could be wrong. I have to double check and look it up. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's going to be all this movement within the next couple of years between all those schools that are, you know, Oklahoma and Texas going to the SEC and then the new schools going to the Big 12 and then the realignments, I guess you could best call them between AAC, Sun Belt, and Conference USA, where you're going to have, I think, was it like two or three schools that are moving up to FBS. Um, yeah, and I think the AAC is getting four to six new schools in the next three years. There's four to six schools going from. I think well, it's, and I know it's four, but I think they're. I think they might be getting a total of six. Yeah, the AAC is losing Cincinnati, Central Florida, and. I want Houston. Say, Houston. Well, here, yeah, or Cincinnati, Houston. Houston. Cincinnati, Cincinnati, Houston, and Central Florida will all be going yeah. to the Big Twelve. That's for the twenty twenty four season. Okay, so it's still um, years away because it, it has there on their on it has here on their membership timeline that says through twenty twenty three. Um. And then the six schools that are joining are Charlotte, Florida Atlantic, North Texas, Rice, UAB, and Texas San Antonio, which is a kind of a funny amalgamation, I guess, if you will. Did UAB win today? They were beating yes. UIU before yes. I left. Yes. Did they? That's kind of like another upset today, like a, a team hovering around 500 record beating a team that's ranked and has a yeah, ten to two record. Hmm, might be some upsets this bowl season. That's the, yeah, that's that's the weirdness of the bowl season, and that you know you take three weeks off, and you may not come out as sharp then in your bowl game. So well, you have all the people not playing these bowl games too. So that that's a big factor too. So I, I guess I saw that there was some controversy in the. The end of the Coastal Carolina Northern Illinois game yesterday, or somebody yes. was thinking that Northern Illinois should have had like one more play or something. Yes, they did. <laughs> it's because they got a first down and out of bounds or whatever, and no one defined if <laughs> it was like they didn't say it was a catch. They didn't say it wasn't a catch. But they kind of moved the ball up, but it's a first down. So you got to spot the ball and then the ref moves out of the way and blows the whistle that like none of that happened. So none of the coach, none of the coaches knew what was going on. Like the refs didn't, I, the refs didn't even know what they were doing. 
So there was like two seconds left when you like went out of bounds and it's at first down, they moved it up. They never like really said it. The ref started running away and then the clock went two, one done. And I was just like, whoa, like what, <laughs> what happens? It, it was just weird. Just no communication between the refs or anything like that. So yeah, there was, uh, they weren't too happy about it, but um, it is what it is. I misspoke about the American. Uh, Central Florida, Cincinnati, Houston will be departing the conference in summer 2023. So that would mean for the 2023 football season, they will be in the Big 12. And the ones that I mentioned who are joining will be joining as full members on July 1st, 2023, which means they would be in the football, in the conference for football in 2023. Okay. Yeah. And all those schools, of course, are coming from Conference USA, who, you know, then went and had to go and make a ton of moves. And also because the Sun Belt decided to expand and, you know, yeah, it's a, it, it's a, it's a big mess. It's a conundrum, is what it is. Yeah. But like, like, Mar- like in addition to those schools leaving for the American, um, Southern Miss, Marshall, and Old Dominion, will be bolting from conference he would say to go to the Sun Belt. And then uh, they're going to add Liberty and New Mexico State who are currently independents. And also then Sam Houston and Jacksonville State who will both be coming from FCS. And the Sun Belt <laughs> um, will be adding uh, Marshall, Southern Miss, and James Madison, who is coming from FCS. So, yeah, it's just, you know, they always used to say, like, you know, oh, you can't tell the players without a scorecard. Um, you can't tell the fucking conferences without a scorecard anymore. No, no, you definitely can't. Um, speaking of football, I think I've had my last my ears cannot listen to Troy Aikman and Joe Buck anymore. Well, I, I can't have wish death upon Joe Buck for at least 15 years. Me too. He, he's um, never, Joe Buck's really never bothered me. I know why no, you guys no. don't like him. I, I, I like, I really do. I'd really get it. But I was watching, watching the chiefs chargers game. Just, just, just the stupidity. The whole the first two drives of the series, it just stupidity came out of their mouths. And I'm just kind of like, wow, you guys are really, I don't know what they were trying to do. I don't know, like, so the Chargers player got injured. So he's wide open in the end zone, catch the ball, spit, you know, turns, bangs his head, drops the ball. Troy Aikman's like, well. Kansas City's defense played really well and stopped them on the fourth down. When did the turf become the Kansas City Chiefs defense? The dude was wide fucking open and he hurt himself, hence why he dropped the ball. And then, then Joe Buck just baffled me with when they had him on a stretcher, like the dude's arms were like still in that kind of frozen state up in the air and they were shaking, which is not good because, just, you know, he hit his head. He gets knocked the fuck out uh, when he hit the ground. But he's talking about, well, I hope he's okay. But he may be he's shaking because it's cold out. It is kind of a more brisk evening here in here in Los Angeles. And I'm like, that. what? What are you talking about? Why? What? This dude's seriously hurt because if he was – he's not giving the thumbs up that he's okay. Like he's still arms are still like in that area. So something's wrong with them. And you're trying to say like, you're trying to cover it up by saying, yeah, it's a little brisk out, a little colder out than normal here in uh, good old Los Angeles. I, I just wanted to, I, I kind of turned the volume down because I couldn't take the two of them anymore. Like their commentary back and forth and the shit they were saying about the game. I was like, yeah, I'm done. I, I can't with these two. I don't really listen to, I don't. I don't listen to the volume up very high on sports games anymore. I, I tend oh, to. God. I tend to not like listening to the announcers. So in any sport, it's not just one specific. It's just them in general. So. I, I just. I, I'm, 
I've gotten to the point where I really only notice announcers now when they say something stupid and just because I've been, it's football season. It seems like every football season in the last couple of years, like bust out the PS2 and start playing the old college football game again, you know, and I think I, I played a game this morning where I think um, the opposing team threw three incompletions, got a three and out and like the, you know, obviously there's only so many canned responses that are in there right. for the team to have the announcer say, but they said like, you know, three and out. And it's like the defense played with tremendous character on those drives. And it's <laughs> maybe the, uh, the coverage was good enough to influence the incompletions, but you know, the, it was just three incompletions. It wasn't like they had to make a play, you know, they, nobody had to make a tackle or they didn't deflect any of the passes or anything like that. But um, yeah, I, I really am starting to only notice like uh announcers when they say stupid shit or when they just get annoying which it's easy for them to get annoying but uh i used to really just like chris collinsworth until i realized how much prep he put into it um but i think he's starting to slip too because there's two things that he's done this year which are very much of the did you just hear what you just said variety (laughs) the first one was a few weeks ago when seattle was playing somebody and this was when wilson was hurt and Collinsworth went, you know, I never knew how important Russell Wilson was to this football team. And I'm like, you didn't realize how important the fucking starting quarterback was <laughs> to the fucking football team? And then I guess apparently last week, I didn't was, was I wasn't watching, but I, saw, but I saw the stories come up about it where he was praising uh, Aaron Rodgers being like open about his toe oh, injury God. and everything. And so you, have to admire, you have to admire his honesty or whatever. And people were immediately going, I lost my shit. Fuck are this asshole lied about getting vaccinated. Mm-hmm. You're praising his fucking trustworthiness. <laughs> oh, they trashed Collinsworth for that one. I, oh, he hey. should have been too. That's just, that's, yeah. that's, that's like, that's, there's just, you know, having like a brain cramp and saying something dumb. Then there's something that was a controversy in the news for days, not just days, but weeks. And then just seemingly whitewashing it or just forgetting about it and saying something stupid. You know, so he did that. That's, uh, uh. Yeah, they were pretty much sucking Aaron Rodgers' dick the whole second half of that game. Like, everything was praising him and praising the Packers. I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. Like, why? I had to turn the volume down on that because I just couldn't anymore. Just couldn't. Yeah, well, it's just, yeah. Anthony Davis is injured. Yes, for he's out for a month at least. Hey, Pat, MC, your MCL. your uh, your New York Knicks are now the trivia question answer from this week. So, <laughs> well, they got to be the Pacers, but he waited for the got, Knicks. They got to be something since they've gone back to being <sighs> the Knicks. I mean, if if he wasn't going to do it at home that's probably where the NBA wanted him to do it was an MSG. So like that, that's where the M- NBA probably wanted it to happen. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, Unfortunately, it shouldn't be the NBA's decision. But No, I'm just saying they got their wish. I think that if you ask them, the NBA, probably. That, that's. Well, I mean, yeah. I was just gonna say, at least, at least they didn't do what, uh, former MLB commissioner uh, Bowie Kuhn did back in the 70s when he ordered Hank Aaron, like the Braves were holding Hank Aaron out of the lineup so that he could hit some home run number 715 in Atlanta. And Kuhn ordered the Braves to put him into the lineup in their road games, wherever they were, uh, you know, against the, uh, you know, the Braves wishes and everything. It's like, obviously they want to see him break at the home stadium and everything, but they were doing yeah, you know, Bowie Kuhn was an asshole, though, who uh, really tried to destroy baseball. So, you know. And I, I was home that night, so I got to watch it happen. And he didn't – I'm glad he didn't, like, waste any time. Like, it happened five minutes into the game. Like, we didn't have to sit – I didn't have to sit there for the whole game waiting for him to make 2-3. So, I mean, uh, I mean, good for him. He was obviously going to do it. I think they made a little bit too big of a deal about it because it's not like it's like the biggest record in the sport or anything. I like, mean, I actually, I actually don't agree with you on that. So, <laughs> well, okay, but I just saying, I, I, I was kind of almost feeling that they were overhyping it to an extent to 
so that they could make a big deal out of it. And the thing that got me thinking that uh, that I'd seen it before was when Derek Jeter not got his 3,000th hit, but got whatever the hell number it was that the one that surpassed Lou Gehrig for to be the all time hit leader for the Yankees franchise. Like they, I remember that was back in 2009 and they made this big to do about it and everything. And I was like, it's like, yeah, okay, great. I was like, nobody really cares. I mean, so it's like, you, you, you just, but this was just a thing by the team. This wasn't a thing by the league or anything. So um, I mean, again, congrats for Steph Curry. It is it is an important thing, but it's like, I mean, he was going to do it. So um, I don't know. But to me, it's like, well, you know, he didn't break the record for the most points of all time or stuff like that. So I don't know. It just, yeah, it's just probably, it, so probably also that my perspective of the NBA is not as in-depth as it is. As they, you, so. The game has changed. So 15 years ago, maybe not. But this is – the NBA is – Three point shooting is a is a vital part of the NBA now. So, and if this guy's the greatest shooter of all time, so it's not like we're just talking about like, yeah. like you're seriously like going to tell me somebody's a better shooter than him, Pat? No, I did not say that. No, you just looked like you were. No, I was getting one of my neuropathy. Pains. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. He he. I mean, this because of the way the game is now it was a big deal 15 years ago. They probably would have, I mean, cause they made a little bit of a deal. They didn't make as big a deal out of it when Ray Allen passed Reggie, but the game has changed to where this record is more important now than it would have been 10 years ago. So, and it is Steph break. He's the best shooter we're, we're going to see. I don't, me and Joe were just talking about this last night. There's a lot of people that think in 10 years this record's getting broken. I don't think this record's getting broken in our lifetime. There's nobody in the NBA right now that's going to break that record. There's not anybody I've seen in college right now who's going to break this record. You got to you have to be a really good three-point shooter through most of your career. You can't just do it for 2 years or 3 years. Steph has been doing this for 10 years now basically. He's been averaging 200 or 300 threes a season. That's not something that ever happened before. Like he's like the top four most main threes in a season are all him. And he might break his own record this year if he stays healthy. And I mean, he may not have to shoot the ball as much when Clay Thompson comes back. So that may hinder it, but he I just, he, I don't see it. Trey, me and Joe were talking about Trey young. Trey young is not Steph Curry. So he's not, he could, something could happen in the next three years and he could turn into him, but I haven't seen anything out of him that makes me think that he's the guy that's going to I and there I don't think Steph is like like somebody we're gonna see another version of. I think he's like one of those very unique players that is like once in a lifetime type player. So we've never really seen anybody that plays the game like he does. Like he's a hybrid of Reggie and Ray Allen and all these other guys. He's kind of a hybrid of them. He does things that those guys couldn't do. So and we've never seen somebody with the range that Steph has. They literally yeah, you have uh, he is. <laughs> you have to guard him at half court. Like when in, when has that ever happened in the NBA? You have to guard a guy at half court. <laughs> yeah, you definitely gotta step up your defense. But then again, you know what's defense these days? They stopped right. doing that like eight years ago, ten years ago, twelve years ago. They don't fucking care about defense anymore. Um, so the yeah, game was ugly. Thing. It was an ugly game, that game against the Knicks the other night. After he broke the record, it was a very ugly game. It wasn't a super fun game to watch. It got really ugly, and there was a lot of turnovers. And I think that – I was actually surprised Steph played last night in Boston, but he took their whole they, – they sat half the roster tonight. I was surprised Steph didn't sit last night just because of all the emotional high and stuff. I thought they might sit him, but they sat him today. So – yeah, maybe you wanted to play. So yeah, I, mean, I, I, I would leave open the possibility that somebody could break the record down the road for the reason that you said, and that it is a different game, and it's definitely still trending in that direction. So, I mean, it's a chance. It's it's, it's, it's stupid but. to predict a, a record is definitely going to be broken unless somebody is like imminently going to do it. But I just leave yeah. open the possibility again that somebody definitely could because it's such a shooting league and everything now. So we'll see. 
I mean, yeah, I, I don't know who that person could be. You know, it could be somebody who isn't born yet. You know? No, I know. I know that most likely it, it would be. I just don't know if I'm going to see it in my lifetime. But it was more yeah. or less the thing. Yeah. I don't think that happened in my lifetime. I obviously. I mean, I'll see it in my lifetime because I'm living to like 120. So it doesn't right, make a Joe, difference. You found the fountain of youth, Joe. So well, you're, the, you're the only one who's got the, uh, you know, the, 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 the habits that would actually allow him to do that. So. Emperor Palpatine showed you how to do like stay not die. <laughs> you saying he's got a secret cloning facility on Exegel? <laughs> actually, you know what? It won't surprise me. Exegel. <laughs> it's an Exegel. That's right. Hey, Buck That's Showalter, right. the manager of the Mets. Let's see how that works out. They have to have okay. a season first. That doesn't even matter right now. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. I I I saw something earlier in the week that said that they were going to be meeting to discuss little issues, but then they're not going to talk poor economics until next month as if they're worried that if they talk about it before Christmas, it's going to ruin all their Christmases or something. And I'm like, oh, fuck you, you fucking children. Uh, I'm I'm fully expecting at this point it uh, unless something drastically changes. My expectation is basically they will probably let this drag so that some spring training games get canceled. I'm expecting it, but they'll preserve the full season. But because of spring, some spring training games getting canceled. The month of April, you're going to see some really fucking ugly baseball. Correct. You're going to you're going to have guys who still aren't going to be uh, fully in game shape. You're going to have a combination of pitchers who aren't stretched out to pitch more than five innings if they're lucky, and you're going to have a bunch of hitters who are just going to be swinging at everything. So, yep. <laughs> uh, it's going it's going to be a rough first month of the baseball season. That's my prediction as of right now, and I am fully uh, uh within my right to say i can uh adjust that prediction as uh uh time goes on i have to look to see what all the core issues are i, I really didn't look i know there's a couple they mentioned on tv I mean, but yeah, I... it's, it's, it's the it's the luxury tax level it's the competitive balance tax stuff it's service time stuff um yeah i heard about the service time don't fuck that one up Universal DH, expanded playoffs, um, speed of the game, instant replay, robo umpires, oh. uh, all this kind of stuff is stuff that has to be addressed. Are they going to address all of this stuff now? Who the fuck knows? Universal um, DH needs to happen. Oh, it absolutely does. We've already had discussion. I mean, I, I think that and that should be one of the easiest things to figure out, I think, but uh it's it's the playoffs yeah. need to expand i'm fine with that but some of the proposals i've read are horrendous let's have not, your I, yeah, two I, teams I, I pick your opponent no this isn't fucking fantasy fucking sports yeah that that to me was uh as dr evil would say we're goddamn ridiculous um <laughs> that was just horrible yeah i i i don't know what the hell to expect anymore um they're, uh, you could expand it, but do it properly. Come on, have some common yeah, sense. I mean, shit. Uh, my only issue with expanded playoffs is um, I, we're gonna have November baseball every year. Um, Take ten games off the season. Well, I wouldn't know if it'd be ten, but maybe eight. You know, go back to like a hundred fifty-four game schedule, but. I, I almost think that if you want to have expanded playoffs, you do need to uh, try to shorten the regular season a little bit because then otherwise you're going too long. You're going to have to look into something like, uh, should the World Series be played at a neutral site? And I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, no, don't do that. This isn't um, football. Football's different. This wasn't, yeah, this wasn't the 2019 or 2020 season, you know, yeah. with, with, all, with all the COVID shit and everything. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, well, I, my, I my concern, my concern, as always, is when you get these assholes in a room together, 
they almost inevitably will always find a way to make a bad situation worse. So, yeah. I just, I don't want to like, I just wanted to say one more thing about the NBA. What a good Samaritan Kyrie is because now he's going to come back and play on the road because of all the COVID issues. What a, what a great guy. <laughs> I'm, I think you're being sarcastic. <laughs> I can't even talk about that guy anymore. It's just whatever. You know, you, you, when I think about Kyrie Irving anymore, I've been reminded of Scott Hall's promo when he first showed up on Nitro. <laughs> this is where the big boys play. <laughs> ah, what a joke. <laughs> so, Kyrie, yeah. Irving, Kyrie Irving is a joke. Yes. I'm going to tell you guys i'm gonna tell you guys a story and i'm i don't this isn't that this is just covid stuff i don't know if i would you know so on monday i had to go do an inventory at my friend bart's store and you guys he was my best man in my wedding i'm not really friends with him anymore i don't really talk to him anymore like the ball was kind of his, his court at one point and he kind of just stopped talking to me so i'm not going out of my way to talk to somebody that doesn't want to talk to me but it's my job so my district manager i go do everybody's inventory i don't really have a choice anymore because it's something i'm really good at and they go faster if i'm there so he i had to go so i get there and our company policy is you have to wear masks if you're working he didn't have a mask on and neither did his employees so no. when i walked it when i walked in i'm just like i had my mask on i put it on before i got in the store and i'm like uh, why aren't you guys wearing masks? I'm like, we're supposed to wear them. He's like, yeah, I don't wear one. And he's like, it's it's a mandate, not a law. So he started arguing with me about it. And I'm just like, we have a policy. And he's like, yeah, I don't wear one. I'm like, are you vaccinated? He's like, no, I'm not vaccinated either. So I, I, I you know, had my mask on the whole time I was there, but it just, I was not real happy from the rest of the night because I just felt like he was being a dick. And my the, the worst part was my district manager came with his mask on and didn't say anything to them. That's wow. That's that's that's, that's fucking inexcusable. So so that there was other issues, like there was another issue that popped up later in the night where I had long story short, I had called him like a week before the inventory and said, Hey, I need you to do something to make this process easier and he didn't listen to me so when i when we when the inventory was almost over we were counting these stupid little gibbets that go on crocs and i had told him to organize oh. them and do something and he didn't listen to me so i had already done most of his inventory he had two people there who sucked so i scanned 90 percent of the store guys and these other two people scanned 10 percent in two hours that's ridiculous oh my so, god that's horrible so I was pissed at this point. I just wanted to go home. It's an hour drive for me. So I was doing him a favor and right in front of my district manager, he's like, my, his name's Ross. He was like talking about, it. he's like, you know, there's other things you could have done to organize. He's like, put these in Ziploc bags and stuff. And Bart acts like he never heard that before, even though that's what I called him and told him to do. What a dick. So he plays dumb and says, Oh, that's a really good idea. I should have done that. Wow, so, he just played it off so he wouldn't get in trouble. <laughs> so I, I yeah, that's he used to be my friend. If he wouldn't have been my friend, I would have said something for sure right then. But I'm just like, I just wanted to go home at that point. But I was just very irritated when I left. And I actually told Nicole when I got home, I said, if next time I have to go do his inventory, if this is all still going on. I'm going to be like, I'm not going because I don't feel comfortable because he's not wearing a mask and he's not following policy. So. Yeah, it's your choice. Like, if he wants to be a dick, I can be a dick too. So. Do, do your own inventory, fucker. <laughs> I've done, I've done his, his, basically his whole inventory the last like three years. He's had shitty people there besides me. And I just feel like I deserve more than an attaboy for this. Like they're, they're not hard for me, but sometimes I have to do more work at ones that this is one that I've continually had to do more work at than other ones. And I feel like 
I'm just being taken for granted to some degree. So I was very irritated when I left the other night because he didn't listen to me what I told him to do. And then he was being a dick the whole time I was there. So it's like, Hey man, you want your inventory done? Follow, follow steps. You can be in and out. He just seems like hey, he's. Hey, uh, what? Hey, Adam hey, what? boy. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's that's, 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 that, that's ridiculous for the district manager who is wearing a mask, who obviously has to know what the store policy is, uh, to come in and then just not even say anything to him. That's, um... <laughs> what are you? What are you? What are you afraid of? You're the one with the authority. I mean, seriously. Yeah. So, Makes I mean, no I sense. I do some of these. Like sometimes I go to them. And like, there's ones I go to where the store manager's awesome. And she's like, you guys are coming to help me with my inventory. So I'm going to buy you dinner. Like that kind of stuff happens sometimes. And that's really cool because then you feel like you're appreciated. But most of them I go to, I'm just a body who's there to make their life easier. Like that's essentially what I am because I'm, for, I don't know why I'm good at this. It's, it's, it's an odd thing to be good at, but one of the other district managers. Something you're good at. Yeah, one of the other district managers who's retired now, she told me one day, she's like, Matt, I've worked at this company for 30 years. And she's like, you're the best person at doing these inventories that I've ever seen. So everybody knows that I'm that person. So I go to ones and you can tell people are like, oh, Matt's here. I don't have to do shit. Matt's here. You know, I, I, I see that happen. Where the, I, I'm not going to do this section because Matt's going to do it. Like I've watched people, guys, like I'll be in an aisle and they'll be across from me and they'll scan one bin of shoes and I'll scan four in the same amount of time. <laughs> Damn, what the hell are and they you, doing? You get these managers who are like getting paid salary and you would think those are the people that want to be out of there fast because they're basically doing it for free. It's their own time. And they're the ones that fart around and don't do it. They fucking stand around and talk. And I'm just like, why are you not wanting to get out of here fast? <laughs> I mean, I would be. <laughs> I'd be scanning like I'm, a fiend. Let's I'm go. By the hour, though. So if we end up staying a little longer, I benefit from it. They're the people who are giving away their time for free and they're sitting there talking and farting around. And I'm just like, what are you doing? Like, this is the opposite of how it should be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, obviously, Seriously. They, uh, obviously, they're afraid to go home. <laughs> there's some, there's, Maybe. there's some, there, there's something going on at home. I mean, Maybe some, they have some a of it, shitty home life. Who knows? <laughs> so, I've probably done 150 of these inventories. I did a bunch of them when I used to work at Champs too, but I bet you I've done at least 150 of them at this store, at this location, or at this company. So, it was just the, the mask thing was pretty strange the other day. It was just very awkward and very uncomfortable and. Like people only do things because they get paid. And that's just really sad. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I get it. Like I I've I'm really not wearing the mask anymore just because yeah, I don't want to. Um I find it a nuisance, especially if I'm wearing a glasses when I'm out because it's impossible to breathe through there without getting the glasses constantly fogged up and shit. But if I go somewhere where it's like absolutely requirements to wear a mask, which Pretty much the only place around here that's still like that are medical buildings. Um, yeah, I'll I'll wear the damn mask, you know. So, but these places where they're just like, oh, we encourage you to wear a mask. I'm just like, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not taking it out of my jacket pocket where it's been for weeks uh, <laughs> to to do it. Um, and I still need to get my booster shot, uh, but I'm just there. There is that blacking. For there there is that fatigue you know where it's just like oh this has been going on for so long i said but i'm like at least, well at least i'm vaccinated at least i'm not bitching about wearing masks i'm just like i'm just not wearing it you know but i'm not one of these assholes that's out there going like you can't tell me why to damn my freedom <laughs> you know, people are just super annoying actually annoying is not the word but i won't say what that word is you can spell it. 
uh, no, because I'm actually not really sure what that word is. It's uh, it's beyond annoying and just under. Uh, yes, they deserve to die. And I hope they burn in hell. <laughs> uh, it's somewhere in that gamut, um, but I'm not sure exactly where. You know. Oh my God! Look at this NFL game going on. Yeah, um, Carson Wentz is five for twelve for fifty-seven yards with a touchdown yeah, and it, an interception. It, it was it was twenty to nothing uh, at halftime, and and now it's twenty to seventeen. Yeah, and Jones is doing his thing in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I don't know who has the ball. Oh, it's a, I think it's it. No, it says Colts. Okay, Colts have it now. So they may be able to hang on here. So maybe I think yeah, how about, just scored 17 points all in the fourth quarter. So who knows? Yeah. Yeah. But how about those Kansas city chiefs? I was writing them off a month or so ago and now it looks like they're kind of back to being the chiefs. Well, nobody else in the AFC wants to have the best record. So. Yeah. Which of course makes no sense considering they get the buy. <laughs> I mean, so, they're finding their groove. And that they're fighting at the right time. You know, they'll probably, I'm pretty confident they'll lock up the number one seed. I yeah, think they'll, just, they'll make that move. If you just get hot at the right time of the year. I know. I know, because the last two times the Giants won a Super Bowl, which I am told happened, uh, that's what happened in those seasons was that they supposedly, and Taylor just broke a 67 yard touchdown. <laughs> well, there goes that. I guess that's game because I mean now they're going to be up ten with two minutes to go. So, um, but yeah, I was going to say, um, yeah, I, I've been told that those two times the Giants won the Super Bowl, uh, they, they got hot at the right time of year. Yeah. I mean, that's... you know, it's do you know what's so sad, Pat? Our teams are four and nine, and we're still mathematically in the playoffs <laughs> or have a chance to make the playoffs. Do you know how sad that is? One of the reasons how sad that the... is. One of the reasons is because there's seven the NFC off. sucks, uh, and that and the NFC it's, sucks. It's not so much I would say that the NFC sucks, is that it's top heavy. Yeah, yeah, four with, teams, with, with, and with the, the rest all division, suck. With the four division leaders and the Rams, and then it's a lot of mediocrity. You know, yeah. you, the only which other means they that's, suck. Yeah, the only other team that's <laughs> over five hundred in the NFC right now is. Is San Francisco who's seven and six, but you got one, two, three, four, five teams who are six and seven. You know, it's because it's like it's like you know, team A beats team B one week, and then team B beats team C the next week, and then the week after that, team C goes and beats team A. So there's five teams that are six and seven. Like it's just like the NFC is just so mediocre. <laughs> it's just funny to watch, but it's so mediocre. Yeah, like I said, it's 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 top heavy, and then it's a shit ton of mediocrity, and you know, there's there's one truly awful team in the NFC, of course, um, and it's like, do we throw the Giants and the Bears in as being truly awful teams as well? Uh, maybe, I guess, I don't know. I mean, you could to a certain extent. Yeah, well, well, this, this is kind of interesting in a way. I mean, so the Bears and the Giants, like you said, are both four and nine. The Giants have a negative 78 point differential. The Bears are negative 101. You know, the Falcons are six and seven. Their point differential is minus 108. <laughs> so go, go, go figure that one out. Um, good, good job, Jacksonville. The Urban Meyer experiment worked. I knew that was going to be, that was going to fail. Absolutely. I mean, Back, the running was uh, on the grass for that he's one. He's an idiot. So. Back, back, back uh, several years ago, and I think you might still be able to find it like on like YouTube or something. Um, you know, NFL Network used to do like those like countdown shows like MLB Network did. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the problem was is that it seems like they, they like stopped updating them after times. I know MLB Network doesn't like reproduce new ones anymore. But NFL Network had one for the top 10 coaches who belonged in college. And, you know, it featured guys who had been college coaches who, you know, were then fucking train wrecks as as NFL head coaches. 
and they had to update it because Pete Carroll was on the list. <laughs> and then, of course, Pete Carroll went won the Super Bowl, so they had to take Pete Carroll off the list. But so I think some of the guys, some of the guys who I think they had on the list were Lou Holtz from his disaster with the Jets in the late seventies, and they had the one guy I think it was, it was Bud Wilkinson who had been a great coach at Oklahoma and mm. then was a terrible coach for the St. Louis Cardinals. And I think Nick Saban and Bobby Petrino were on it. And it's like, hey, you can update that one now and throw Urban Meyer right on the list. Yep. I, I, I knew that I was going to fail. I guess what really surprised me about it was how spectacular the failure was. And because, of course, it wasn't just because of shit that was going on on the field. You know, it was all this off the field shit, which he's got nobody to blame but himself for, you know. Nope. Uh, and I mean, I, I predicted it. Like, I was on the phone with my dad, I think on Wednesday. And I was, I was asking him, hey, did you hear about the latest Meyer thing? And he goes, what? And I said, and, and he was, you no, know, he was talking about like something else. I said, no, 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 no. I said, there's a new one since then. I said, the old yep. kicker of the team said that Meyer berated him and then kicked him while he was like out doing warm-ups uh before one game. I said, Dad, he's going down for this. And later that night they fired him. So yeah, I end, too uh, much stuff adding up. Yeah, that exactly. That's just it. It's like you you can try to ignore one thing or two things, but when it gets to be five or six things and stuff still coming out of the woodwork, then it's like you have to make a a, a, a change. And because of the, the last one there, which obviously seemed to be the, the proverbial stroll of Brooklyn Camel's bar with the, the, the Lambo story, um, I can't see any college ever giving him a chance either because it's like you've got somebody accusing him of essentially abusing him, you know, physically yep. abusing him. You ain't going to get away with that shit in the pros. You are not going to get away with that shit in college. You have one college kid come out and say the coach attacked me you know, in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. And of course, you, you can say the language. You can say the language is strong, saying he attacked them, but you can't have the head coach doing shit like that. It's like the Bobby Knight era ended a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, you it know? doesn't exist anymore. So that that shit that shit ain't gonna fly. So I I really can't see any college ever giving him a chance. I thought he should have stayed out of coaching anyway because I was getting sick of hearing all that shit about his health and everything. So it's like. Dude, if you're not healthy, don't coach. I mean, yeah. that's pretty just, obvious. At this point, surely, you just need to stop. My yeah, opinion, sure, but surely you stop. made enough, surely you made enough money. Oh, uh, you definitely did. Oh, I, so, the Jags don't want to pay him the rest of the salary either. I was reading I, that. I, I, I saw that, and all I can say to them is, "Good luck with that." Or, or oh, oh, I, I'm sorry. I want to see how that's going to go. Yeah, I was say, let, let, wait, let me do the Jerry Seinfeld. Well, good luck with all that. There's almost <laughs> no way they're not they're they're, they're not going to be forced to pay him. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm curious to see what happens. A, a, a contract's a contract. Well, I remember way back in the day when Denny Nagel was with the Rockies, and they oh, finally geez. like re- released him because he was like getting blown by. A, they found out he got. <laughs> He got arrested with uh, uh, like a prostitute blowing him and everything. And the Rockies tried to like uh, negate the rest of his contract when they cut him by saying like he had violated the team, like morals clause or ethics clause or, or something <laughs> like this. Some new clause our, they put in that contract, right? Well, it's like, I think it's like a standard clause that's in like every MLB contract or whatever. Yes, yeah. But I think it was like an arbitrator basically, you know, rules saying, uh, you can't just go and try to enforce this now. And so they had to pay up on him. So I, I doubt very seriously Meyer won't get his money. Moro, what do you mean? It's only a hooker. Come on now. It's not like I'm married. Oh, wait. Yes, I am. Because he was married. <laughs> yeah. I was being sarcastic. Oh, oh man. That's funny. It's a, it's, That's I'm funny. just saying, it's, like, it's one thing to get, you know, like pulled, you know, pulled over or arrested with a, you know, a prostitute blowing you in, in the car at the time. I said, but there's another aspect to it when you're also married at the time. So he was getting a slobber knobber. <laughs> My God! My God! 
That's oh, a perfect man. segue into wrestling, Pat, because you did the by God. Well, all I can say is this. They did a really good job on Wednesday night, and hats off to those two guys. I actually disagree with you on that, too. So mm-hmm. I don't I think it's like, I felt like that was the way that match should have gone. So they just did one two months ago. Yeah, but nobody remembers that. No, these aren't WWE fans watching this. This is like real wrestling fans watching AEW. So they do remember because I saw a lot of other people saying the same exact thing I did that you just did it two and a half months ago. Okay, so how would you have ended that match then? Because you uh, knew it, they were going to go to won. Hangman needed to win that match. He just won the belt. He already made him look semi weak. Okay. Title defense. But, but, but then you would just be stumbling around looking for another program. Because Omega's still out. Well, I mean, they could, you can create a way for somebody to fight somebody again. You don't have to just beat them once and it's over. Like twice is usually the, okay, this feud's over. You beat them twice, not once. So it was not, it was not the, what I would have done. I was very surprised that they went, they did the title and a draw again. I was actually disappointed when I saw. When I did, when I was reading about it, I was like, "Wow, we're going to do this again." So I mean, I, I I would say I wasn't surprised for the reason being that um, they still were really they're still basically booking Hangman as the underdog. Mm-hmm. So he's the underdog champion. I feel like they're still trying to build him up in a way. Um. I don't think this, but to me, this doesn't help. So it doesn't help to me. It, 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 it may not look weak. I, I, can, I, I can see where you're coming from. My, my thing, though, too, is that I, I think it's, it's kind of a thing where they would go like, well, who would expect a hangman page could actually hang with Brian Danielson for 60 minutes? And, you know, you can make that about a lot of guys because who the fuck ever wrestles 60-minute matches anymore? You know? And there's there's That's that true. there's that when you want when you have wrestling matches, sometimes you have that sweet spot where you're like, all right, this is this is good. And if you start going past there, this match to me went past that because this match, in my opinion, and most of my other friends' opinions, this match was not better than Omega and Danielson. We all think that match was better. So there was that sweet spot there where that match only went 30 minutes and those guys had more chemistry than these two did. So I think this match was too long. So I believe it was too long. And I, I think that they needed a better finish. They needed a, more of a concrete finish. So, and I, I don't, AEW is pushing a lot of the right buttons right now. They're doing a lot of good, better stuff than bad stuff. But to me, this was not the decision I would have made. I, I think that Hangman should have won. And I don't like, I don't necessarily like either of these guys. So I'm not an advocate for either of them. I'm not a fan. I don't like Dan O'Brien. I've never really liked him. I, I'm not, it's not a secret. <laughs> so, nope. and man is okay. Like, I don't, I don't like the cowboy gimmick. I think he's a good wrestler, but I don't like the cowboy and I don't like the drinking stuff. I, I've always thought that that was, I don't like that gimmick because I don't drink. So it doesn't do anything for me watching a guy drink. So that doesn't well, I, Yeah, I, I, I would definitely agree that the whole, like, you know, the, all the, the cowboy and drinking shit is dumb. <laughs> so Not this I, guy. I'm, I'm right. And, of course, you drink. <laughs> so it's going to fit more with you. Or, like, Zach says the same thing. Zach's always like, oh, he's drinking. I, I like that because I like to drink. So... <laughs> Tricky part means nothing to me. It's just the whole cowboy gimmick. That's what cowboys do. So that's part of the gimmick. If you have a cowboy that doesn't drink, it kind of doesn't make sense. Honestly. I mean, it was interesting that MJF made a Ryback, <laughs> used Ryback in his promo the other night, made a Ryback reference. Yeah, I didn't um, see that part. I, I heard about I, it. I think that... Uh, I think that um, shit. I got sorry. I got distracted by something. I saw on my feed here. Um, don't know why my Facebook feed is trying to show me uh, things that I'd be interested in posts from fucking Jason Whitlock. But um, <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought. What were we talking about? I just said that MJF made a ride back. Right? Oh yeah, yes, yes, yes. Um, I think. 
that may have been intentional because Ryback never lets a slight against him go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he did make some and he did make some kind of uh, response on Twitter where he, you know, denigrated both MJF and and Punk to in, in some way. I can't remember exactly what he said and now I'm not going to look it up because that would mean I would have to type the terms Ryback Twitter into my Google feed. Um, I I think it's but, very yeah, interesting. Whatever, whatever he said, whatever he said was just as stupid and nonsensical as you would expect it to be. Where he basically, you know, of course, was saying like, "I'm better than both of those guys." It's, it's very he, interesting. He, he didn't say that, that was the implication. So I think MJF may have done that intentionally, just to you know, it was it was a poke the bear moment. So. I'm sure you saw that they said that Fox and they're pushing. They want WWE to try to sign MJF away from AEW in two years. So, yeah, it was like, it was like two yeah. years. I mean, two years in wrestling is a fucking eternity. It MJF, is. MJF could somehow be totally ruined by that point. I don't think he will, but um, you know, it's just like that's that's a there's a there's a distinct possibility that just nobody cares about MJF at that point for some reason or other. I mean, he could suffer a debilitating injury. Yeah. Who the hell knows? I mean, God forbid, of course. Um, but I, I just found that funny. It's like we're <laughs> because first of all, I don't think any exec of Fox honestly knows a fucking thing about <laughs> so so there's that. Um but you know, yeah, just the, the the fact that they think that they have like input or something like that on this is I think it's also pretty hysterical. The biggest the biggest wrestling news of the week was Kevin Owens resigning with WWE because I did not see that coming. So I really you know, didn't. Now, let me ask you this. On a scale of 1 to 10, uh, how disappointed are you that he is staying with WWE? It's got to be an 11, right? I mean, it's it's probably an 8 or a 9 because I really wanted him to go because I just – I don't – he's a reason. Like, I don't like WWE right now. I don't know how to stop watching it. If he would have jumped, that would have given me more ammo to be like, I don't need to watch this. But now he's he's – they must have. Joe said this to me last night. He's like, it's not just about money. They promised him something. <laughs> Joe said they had, they had to have. <laughs> um, I think money probably is primary. I think it always will be. But here's the I, thing: I, I can't imagine AEW would have paid him as much as WWE. Probably. No, they would. They wouldn't have probably. That that's but, for sure. I mean, yeah, he's gonna make money, but he can still be cut. So if he's still gonna be cut, <laughs> my comeback with that is. If you're going to, if you, you could cut me at any time, then this 30, 60, 90 day bullshit's out. As soon as you cut me, I'm a free agent. Like I would have negotiated that shit because if they didn't, then I wouldn't have like, what's the sense of fucking resigning then? You know, no, it's about I, the money. Great. I would agree with Dory, that. Cause, but it, it has to be, I still think for him, just, uh, just reading, like listening to him on podcasts and doing interviews. Like he loves wrestling. I get it. Like, yeah, he wants to make money. He's definitely made money. But at this point, like, you want to be relevant still, right? You're not just going to sit back and be a fucking jobber and, and take a back seat if you're going to sign for another three years at two to three million dollars a year. You know, they had a problem with some some type of title run. Like he's going to get the title at some point next year in some type of manner. So, I mean, I just hope it works out for him resigning back in. So, you know, if it is awesome. If not, then it kind of sucks because I don't want him to be another casualty fucking November of next year. We're seeing his name pop up on WWE's e list of cut people. That's just going to be stupid. I so I'm on Ryback's right Twitter because I want to find out what he said. <laughs> I just don't see that happening with Owens, I guess, though, because I think that they know that he's reliable. Uh, that he's a good enough worker. He can go out there. He can make anybody look good that like he wouldn't be like the first kind of guy on the chopping block but at the same time when they've made the cuts that they've made this year they keep on saying it's because of budget cuts so yeah if they maybe deem that his salary then is too much you know who the fuck knows so here's here's mjf's um here mjf's here's ryback's uh response this just says thanks for the shout out at mjf now you have your big chance at being an enhancement talent working with an underwhelming opponent. And he gives the wink and he has feed me more. And there's a picture he posts 
of CM Punk's face all bloodied when I think during his, I think it was probably, I don't remember if it was his first or second match. It was his first one, like standing in, in, in the octagon with his, you know, cuts and his face bleeding from that. Okay. Yeah. You don't like Punk. Punk does probably doesn't like you either because you guys worked in a program that neither one of you wanted to be in. And oh, you, know, gave, know you, punk, you didn't, we know you didn't give two shits. <laughs> You didn't yeah, give two shits so. because you didn't work very safe when you when it, yeah. you wrestled against people you didn't really want to work with. Yeah, he was he was. He was... And there's others who said he was fine. They, he was safe with them. Yeah, because if you liked you or you guys were good, that's fine. But everyone else, he didn't give a fuck about, and he didn't yeah. care if he did fucking hurt him. Right. We 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 we've said countless times, AJ. I think first and foremost. You know, he's the modern day Goldberg. The so the only like I guess the only the the small part there's that little piece of Kevin Owens staying with WWE that I'm okay with because now that has completely opened the door for Wednesday night. If we don't see Kyle O'Reilly, I will be shocked at this point. I feel like we are going to see him Wednesday night. And we are going to get the Undisputed Era. The AEW version of the Undisputed Era, I think, is coming sooner than later. So, what, what I guess is uh, most interesting. Uh, so, how soon then do they break Cole away from the box and doing that's, that? That's the thing. Because it, they, it, it almost... It almost feels like they have to wait for Omega to come back in order to. It does, but it's like they've they've set the table where he's like, "I have a surprise for you next week," and I told Joe that AEW doesn't really dick tease people. They generally like when they say something's going to happen. It's you know they they they're not going to. It's not going to be some lame thing, whatever it is. I I just can't see them giving us something else other than him, especially because. He's fighting Orange Cassidy in a singles match. That's like, to me, that's when you bring him out and have him help. They may have all of them in the super or the super click for a month or two. I could see them putting all of them together. And then I saw somebody. And then, yeah, it, it, it falls to infighting then. Yeah. Yeah. I saw somebody post the meme and it was that it said <laughs> at Revolution in March. And it had the Young Bucks and the Undisputed Era, and it said Adam Cole on a pole match or custody for Adam Cole. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, damn it! You just stole my thunder in a way. I was going to say that Cole, Cole, Cole's surprise for the Bucks next week is that he's going to dress up as Santa and give them big kisses on the cheek. Oh man! <laughs> and like, Paul. I. I and Adam Cole's my favorite. He's my favorite wrestler. He's my, like, if I could only pick one wrestler, I would take Adam Cole. He's my favorite favorite. And I've read people saying they're not using him correctly. And I'm like, he's been there for three and a half months. He's 30, he's 30 years old. He doesn't have to have a title right now. <laughs> no, they haven't, they haven't used him in any standout way yet. That's for sure. But, um, Everything's like, been with he, the Bucks for the most part in a couple singles matches here and there. And, and, yeah. and which is fine. Pat Pat doesn't like Orange Cassidy, so maybe not to you, but the chemistry between Adam Cole and Orange Cassidy is fantastic. Like their comedy, their comedy and the stuff that they're doing right now is very entertaining. The match last night, the eight man tag was the best match I watched on either wrestling show last night. The the stuff with Cole and Cassidy and Cole has that like he can do the comedy stuff like if he has to and and, it, and he can it's okay you don't have to be in everything you do does not have to be serious like constantly like it's okay to dabble a little bit and do some comedy or do something a little bit different and we didn't get to see a lot of that out of Cole when he was in NXT because he was the leader of the faction and he was always the guy talking so this is maybe a little bit different take on him than WWE or NXT gave us so I'm perfectly fine with everything they've done with him up to this point, I'm not upset because he, I was a little bit upset because he wasn't in that tournament, but I also thought CM Punk should have been in that tournament too. So I was surprised that Daniel Bryan was the only one of the three of them in that tournament, but they're, they're saving Adam Cole 
to win the title when they turn him face. I don't think he's going to win their main title until they turn him face. So I think that they know that he's young and he's over. Is there any doubt that the guy's over? He's a heel and he gets cheered. So like he's supposed to be a bad guy and he's getting cheered. Even, even when the Bucks are getting booed, he's getting cheered. <laughs> like they come out separate yeah. and you hear like a mixed entrance for the Bucks and then everybody goes crazy when Cole comes out. So they know that down the road they can turn him and put him in a match with Kenny or they can put him in a match with whoever and he, they can turn him face and he can win. It's, it's fine. If Punk doesn't have to win the belt. That's my thing with Daniel Bryan. I don't think Daniel Bryan has to win the AEW title. I don't think it's it's needs to happen. So I, I it's not no. going to determine his legacy at this point. He can wrestle. He can be in good matches, but he should be helping. He's still at a point in his career where I think he should be helping more than he's like. I need a title, or you got to put this title on Daniel Bryan. I don't think he needs it. So that's why maybe I thought Hangman should win because I think that. Hangman's a future of the company type guy who's not going anywhere anytime soon. So I thought that it would have been smarter to put Hangman over in that situation. So um, let's backtrack a little bit because you guys jumped ahead before I can make a comment. Okay. Um, no. no. I, uh, I liked the hour match. There were some small parts in there that were kind of, I don't know, slow. You know, it was a little lull in the matches in regards to that. Your chemistry wasn't always there. Um, for an hour match, it was fine. I, I liked it. There were some good stuff, spots they had and whatnot. Um, as far as the finish, I was fine with it. Yes, I know they just did it a couple months ago. Two different guys for me. And I think it was okay because they are playing him as the underdog. So does... Who needs to get over in that match? Who got? Who needs to get over and who got over? Is there really a need for either one of them to be both at this time? If they continue this feud with the two of them, then do something where it's two out of three or some shit like that. Do something where it switches hands. Hangman wins. Brian so wants a rematch. Brian said wins. Page gets you know his rematch and wins it back. Something because Moxie's going to be out for a while. Kenny's going to be out for a while and until you yeah, punk's going to be in a few with MJF for a while. So, and Cody seems to be going back for the TNT title. So where, you know, where else are you going to go with this? You have so many tag teams, you know, who else do you trust to be in the singles that's going to go for a title against hangman right now? That's my opinion. I wasn't that really upset about the finish. It's kind of like they're playing him as an underdog. So, you know, they want him to still, I don't know. I don't think he needs to get over because I think the fans are behind him. So we'll see. Um, I have two questions. One's AEW and one's WWE. Okay. AEW. So Sammy Guevara is the TNT champion? Yeah. yeah. He's defended that title six times since he won it almost three months ago. Um, what's the point of having that title then? Well, you can't defend it every week. Most of these guys wrestle every other week on Dynamite, so they don't yeah, wrestle. But my, my point is he's, he's wrestled Bobby Fish, Ethan Page. It says Coco Lane and Luke Langley. It was a match on Dark. Yeah. Like a Six person match at full gear, then Jay Lethal, and then Tony Nese. Um, there's no program, you know. So I just, it seems like they're not doing anything with that title right now. That's, they're not, they're not doing enough maybe to elevate Sammy. Maybe he's dinged up. Who knows? But uh, I don't know. I just a lot of random he, matches. He's mentally dinged. He's mentally dinged up because he just got unengaged with his fiance that he proposed on television <laughs> well well these things happen uh the moral the moral of the story there of course is don't get engaged on television uh, so joe I, I i i feel like 
I it, the only thing that sucks about it is that it's taped, but I feel like they've set the table for Cody to turn heel when he fights Sammy on Christmas Day. <laughs> Wait, what was that? I'm sorry. Shane, Shane was leave, left comments for us in the chat, so I, I was just reading them. It sucks because it's recorded, but I feel like Cody was not thrilled when Sammy came out to help him the other night. So I felt like I feel like this is the time to turn Cody heel. He got booed again when he came out the other night. When his music hit, he got fucking booed. Like 75, 25 booed. I don't know what else more. This is like John Cena all over again. What more like do you need? To, <laughs> you gotta turn this. I saw somebody had a sign that said heel Cody equals ratings. I saw that on <laughs> and I mean listen. Hey. It's kind of one of those things I feel like Cody is like so against turning heel. And it's the other thing too. It's like, is he afraid to turn heel because the other VPs are also heel? You know what I mean? It's like, who cares? Just fucking turn heel. Let all of you VPs be heel. Like well, he and that's like in the back of my mind. Like that shouldn't be. Like, who gives a shit? Like, I think it would be, I think it would be better ratings, to be honest with you, if he would go heel at this point. Yeah, he already he already knows that the other EVPs are better regarded than he is that they're cooler than he is um you know just just you know name the shit so it, it just goes back to what i've always said where cody's never really over you know like, he, he, was never, he was never as over as he thought he was basically you, you so. i mean that, that was 100 you bring him out when dan lambert is shitting on everybody and he still gets booed. Like he got booed with they got <laughs> Dan Lambert out to get the crowd to cheer Cody because yeah. everybody hates Dan Lambert. And then they booed when Cody's music hit. I'm like, okay, this didn't work. You just took the biggest stooge in the company, the guy that comes out and shits on AEW every time he has a microphone, and they're booing as soon as Cody's music hits. Almost like we wanted somebody else. We didn't want yeah, Cody. Yeah. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, Cody has with some of his public comments um, where he's like explained like the reasons like, like why he won't turn heel and everything. He's really showing himself to be pretty fucking ignorant of a lot of shit. Like he seems to think that if, if he turns heel, um, then that means his interracial baby will be booed or something like that. I know. I, come on, man. And, like, like all that, all that shit he was saying about how he's like, you know, he's like fighting to end racism. Like, you know, the fact that I'm having a baby with an African American woman is like, this is going to put an end to racism. It's like, dude, who the fuck are you? Okay. Here's the, the 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 part of that 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 can make me chuckle on is the fact that Brandy, in her mind, she actually thinks she's a good wrestler too, and she is not. <laughs> Yeah, she thinks she she thinks she thinks she thinks she's a good wrestler. She thinks she's a star. She thinks people come to see her. None of those. She, are here. she None of right are here. now. She seems like she wants to be a heel. Like I feel like her being on TV and like when she lit the table on fire and then hopped out of the ring, like everything with the look on her face, like that was everything heel. like. She she's total. I think she just she is totally in the whole heel thing. Like just fucking turn heel. I don't give a shit. I don't care if I have to see Brandy. She doesn't bother me. Like if you want to have the heel couple, want to do the heel couple thing. By God, just go ahead and do it at this point. Just this don't show Shane. Brandy's. Just don't show Brandy's matches on. Put her on dark in elevation where she belongs. <laughs> don't show her matches on TV. Because seriously, seriously, like looking back now, I feel like we were. We're, we were given a gift because we didn't have to see Brandy in that four-way match with Shaq because it was going to be Brandy and Jade Cargill. We're going to be the women in that match. Can you imagine what kind of disasters could have happened with those two women in the ring fighting each other? So yeah, we would have been having like the, the Jackie Gata <laughs> match flashback. Right? It would I mean, be green and greener. Gata, but, you know, <laughs> so, everybody always and, fights that match is the worst match ever. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, the worst women's match I ever Shame. saw was Penelope Ford and Big Swall on AEW. That was the worst women's match I've ever seen. I'll never forget that train wreck. Well, so, no, I was, I was talking, there was that, it was that mixed tag match back, and I think it was, 
2002 or three when it was JBL and Trish against Christopher Nowinski and Jackie Gata. <laughs> Uh, that everybody talks about like one of the worst matches of all time, but but the thing with that's why I don't remember it. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I think I may have seen it live, but I tried to like I surgically probably saw it live. So yeah, I, I think I like self surgically removed the memories of that match from my brain, which probably explains a lot of other reasons why I have issues with things. But um, the um, the thing with Brandy too. What is her official title with the company? Is it Chief Brand Officer? Yeah. Isn't that the same title or one of the titles that is held by one Stephanie McMahon? I think it is. So my point is, Brandy, I think, fancied herself as the Stephanie McMahon of this company when it was started and everything. And whenever Stephanie McMahon is on TV, and now that I've said that, she'll probably show up in a week or two. um, (laughs) She is really the definition of the character that you love to hate. Brandy has basically gotten to that too. So it's like, you want to be Stephanie McMahon so badly, you're kind of there. So convince your husband it's time to just turn heel and you just run with it, you know? Hold on real quick for you. We're going to continue. Shane, Shane, Shane's listening now. Okay. <laughs> he, just, he said, just saw you guys. We're live. Excited to hear what we're talking about. <laughs> Agree with everyone so far with the Undisputed Air AEW. And he said, Adam Cole puts guys over, i.e. Shane likes Pat McAfee. I do as well. But he said, so I. he puts guys over Pat McAfee. He said, the internet wrestling fans are done with the Bucks. That's why they get booed. Not going to totally disagree with that one. Uh, I, I think I think I think there's some truth to that. I don't think it's yeah. that. I don't think it's that. The pure uh, wrestling fans, no, but the internet fans and the casual, I can see. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't. I don't think it's at as high of a level as it could be. Like I think yeah. that there's. I think there's a bigger possibility for people to get tired of the bucks and start hating on them, but it'll still take a while to get. Cody, he thinks we'll turn heel. Um, it's like I think it's Cody, he, he, he made a comment. You can only resist it for so long, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. It's um, like because I've been watching like the the, the raw and nitros from '96 into '97. Now we're into early May '97, so Austin's pretty much face now. But it's like you know, you could tell where the fans were starting to cheer him for so many months before they finally said, "Okay, we're turning him full fledged face," and 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 everything like that. And, you know, again, they did it really more so by, like, turning Brent heel and and just, like, letting Austin just do the things that he did without, like, you know, having him go after the faces anymore. So it wasn't so much that they changed his character is that they just kind of changed, like, his direction, you know? Yeah. But they, they fought that for as long as they could because obviously they, they, they were obviously intended to make Austin be the biggest heel in the company. And yeah. it it just didn't go there. So, and that was before the they threw the Vince aspect into it. The other thing he mentioned is is Cody trying too hard, which I actually think he is, because I think at a certain point he was doing his promos fine, like he was being. You could tell they were good, and then when the fans started booing him when he came back, it feel like he's trying too hard to cut these like promos to make him be like the super face, and it's not working for yeah. him right now. There, there, there's two th- there's two aspects to that one was he made those again i'm talking about like the public comments he's made he made those comments where he's saying like every word that i say in my promos is workshop what are you in the fucking actor's studio well so it, it's like i've watched the show that was, that was a ridiculously the, stupid thing to say i've watched the, the his reality show and there's one of the episodes where he's like he has a piece, piece of paper i'm like i know People write down bullet points and stuff like that. It oh, looks like he's like le- legitimately like wrote down a whole bunch of lines. Like he's like memorizing them, like playing right. through his head. And it's kind of like, and that's where it's kind of like that that specific episode for that p- specific promo that he cut. It's kind of like, okay, you're 
some of it was heartfelt. Some of it you could kind of tell was like his bullet points that he was writing down because we already saw the promo. So now we're seeing what he was doing behind the scenes before that promo hit. And it's kind of like, okay, you're, you're being authentic. But at the same time, I think you're still trying too hard with seeing your promos. Just, just let it go, dude. Just, just go out there and just, just I, cut the shit. Cut the I, promo. I, Pat, Pat said something about cooler earlier. I, I think somewhere in there, Cody might be envious because the Bucks and Kenny are bigger mm-hmm. stars than he is. I'm sure so, he is. I'm sure he yeah. is on a second extent. But you know, this the second thing I wanted to say too about like his promos and everything like that. He's desperately trying to be his father. Yeah. That's the, so blatantly obvious. It was obvious from the moment he dyed his hair. You know, it's like, you know, we're sorry you didn't inherit that gene from your father to get that blonde hair, as if that was natural. Who the hell knows? <laughs> um, but it's like, Cody, sweetheart, your father never got a hideous fucking neck tattoo. <laughs> You could have put that on his shoulder or his back or some shit. Yeah. Why didn't you why didn't you workshop that shit? Why didn't you have somebody say to you, uh, Cody, uh, have you really thought this one through? Because I yeah. don't think you have. So code Cody, uh, I just I, I again I never bought into Cody in WWE. I, I, I never thought anything that he did outside of like the time where like you know he started teaming with his brother and dusty was there in their corner because they were going against the authority and everything there were very few times i really was interested in cody as a character in wwe because i always felt like when he first came into the company he always seemed to feel like he was better than he was he was more over than he was and I've never found him to be a great promo, and I've never found him to be a great worker. So I just always think he's had a he's just had a very overinflated sense of self. And I, he's I think he's a in AEW. I think he's he's a, he's pretty good on the mic, and I think he's a pretty good worker. So I would I would give him like I said, there was a point, not right now, but there was a point maybe a year and a half ago that if I my top ten wrestlers in the world, Cody was on my list. So he's not on it anymore. But there was a point where he was on it. And and so, the other yeah, big, and the other biggest good problem, work in TNA ROH and definitely New Japan. Yeah, yeah, and, and the other the other big problem, of course, with him is that between that game show and the reality show, it's like, Cody, do you want to be a wrestler or do you want to be in Hollywood? <laughs> yeah, if he's if kind of he's playing that fine line. If you want to be in Hollywood, fine. Go 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 be in Hollywood, but don't. I don't know. I just I Cody Cody just doesn't do anything for me. So I mean, and and that's your opinion, and and I I'm not. Like I, he's digressed to me. He's at the point now where he's stale, and he needs to turn heel. He needs that infusion of something. Yeah. Like he needs something, a kick in the ass change because i think the people are bored with him because he hasn't really the bucks and kenny their characters have changed they've played both sides of the you know they've played both sides now yeah. cody has been a face the whole time and he's never really wavered very much other than him getting bust he has to bleed all the time and him having to do do stuff yeah. like go through a flaming table that's unnecessary He's like almost calling unnecessary attention to himself. That's part of him trying too hard. So mm-hmm. that's that that fits into that whole him trying too hard. So yeah, no, definitely could. I, I still think my my prediction is Switchblade will show up in AEW before March. Well, I saw a picture of him and Britt Baker last night. They, I saw Britt Baker posted a picture with yeah. him. Yeah. So, yeah. but there's other rumblings in the past couple of months with him. I, I still believe he's going to show up um i don't know if he'll be by himself or with a couple others i hope it's with god be fucking spectacular um but we'll see but i think before march or by the end of march i think he's going to show up in aew at some point so so AEW is doing a show on christmas day yes their their rampage that's supposed to be on friday is actually on christmas day Ah, interesting. Okay. So, but they're not taping it till Wednesday. 
So, like, I already saw the SmackDown. They taped SmackDown already for Friday. So, like, that's already – the spoilers are already out for that. Not like I was – I'll still watch it. It'll be on my television. I'm not, yeah, I, just, I was just looking at them, so. I – they – see, for me, they, they moved Kevin Owens and they moved Seth Rollins. And immediately within a month, Raw is the better show than SmackDown. So, like, it's not like SmackDown was the better show for for probably a year or two years. The, the year it Raw is actually like where I actually care more about Raw than I do about Smack. Although the WWE fans want Brock Lesnar to beat Roman, that was evident to me last night. Like, this is this is Brock. Brock is over as a face. This is over as Brock oh yeah, really well, really. Well, I love well, that, his overalls. <laughs> his overalls were awesome. The overalls that, that, with the with the Mountain Man cut off sleeve shirts. Dope yeah, that fuck. that was that was the that was the second question I was going to ask here that I said was WWE related. But I mean, for me, there's there's two things about Raw that are still always going to hold me back from actually trying to watch it. And you know, number one, of course, is three hour show, half of which is recap. And that's two, true. And, and number two, Corey Graves. So, uh, <laughs> get back to our crappy announcers we were discussing earlier. Uh, okay, so with what happened on SmackDown last night? That happened sooner than I thought it was going I, to. It happened sooner than I thought, too. Is, Roman, is, is Roman still a heel? Um, technically, yes. He is. It just, it's, I, it's just, it's, and the reason I'm asking this is because it would seem to me that Heyman can't be a face. That whoever Heyman is with has to be he could be a face you could be a face but at the same time i i know that yeah i don't think fans are going to be booing brock right now because this is a little bit of a different side of brock and everything and they are they um, they have sympathy for paul Heyman because brock or roman kicked his ass last night well right that's the other thing too it's like i don't really think you can like turn face by beating up a defenseless manager so um, it was I was I was very curious watching it last night to see what Heyman was going to say when Roman started asking him the questions because I'm like, is he gonna are we gonna divert this for a couple more weeks? So I was surprised when he was like, Yeah, I was trying to keep you away from Brock Lesnar or whatever. And I'm just like, Oh shit, they're doing this now. <laughs> I so, I kind of I kind of felt it was going to happen at the one point Heyman had turned around and he, when he looked at Roman, he had like his super heel look face. <laughs> and he, as he was looking at Roman, I'm like, uh, he's going to, this is going to flip right now in some manner. And but I mean, it like, was, it was interesting. So did, I've, they played it out. Well, I mean, did, did, no, they, do they have a shit finish now at day one? Like, do they have a shit finish? And does, uh, is Brock going to win the rumble? Or what? Like I don't like I don't know if they're gonna I, let Brock win I, yet. I I I believe the winner of the rumble is going for the other title. I mean this, this still feels this still feels to me like a situation where it's like Roman shouldn't lose the title until WrestleMania. Yeah. But who's the guy to beat him at wrestlemania that's going to get the big it'll the big be brock run, the, the, the big brock run for the bigger. brock's the only person that they have all well, right than, <laughs> that could be if, right. if, so if they wrestle like, at yeah. day one the usos will probably interfere again and it'll yeah. be at this dq or some bullshit where <clears throat> roman will win so it's not it's whatever they do with brock right now there's nothing they're really going to do that's going to make him look weak it just can make them look like it's a three on one every single time. And I, I have a feeling that their match at WrestleMania is going to be some stipulation match where the Usos can't be there, or they're going to have a steel cage match or some shit like that. That's what yeah. I kind of feel they're going to do for them at WrestleMania. And then Brock's going to win. Yeah. I, I mean, see the thing, what, what I'm kind of getting at is like, this is like, they don't have somebody there to have like the coronation moment. They have to have like the ultimate warriors, Shawn Michaels, Steve Austin. No. John Cena. Save that maybe. for the other one. <laughs> even John Cena, Daniel Bryan, <laughs> Kobe <laughs> Kingston moment, you know. Even McIntyre, when McIntyre beat Brock, even though it was an empty building, that was a big deal. Yeah. I yeah, think they'll but, save that moment for the other title. Right. So it's like they, they just don't have anybody though, really, really at all for me for either belt to have like that. 
that like great like feel good coronation type moment so and that's their own no fault. because <laughs> most they've no because even for the other belt on raw everyone's held the title so there's really right it's like the major big, contenders of all held the belt so not really yeah there's it's like, like big, no big new e guy big e would have been the guy who you kind of sort of could have maybe had that type of moment yeah. with but he is champion now so it's it's not there for him uh yeah it's like who do you have on the roster right now who hasn't been one of these two champions that would benefit in that way and i uh he's wrestling in nxt but i don't think they're ready to put him there yet so oh uh, yeah they're he, yeah way. nowhere close <laughs> It's, it's it's way too soon for that, but I I know um, it is. But I just WWE nothing surprises me anymore. So I could see them fast tracking. I don't want them to because I don't think I don't. I'm not there with Braun Breaker yet. I, he's not. I'm not the guy that's going to run. Hey, I I would not put it past them to have Braun Breaker win the fucking Rumble. Not yeah, I, sure, I, I, I sure I sure hope they don't do that. But um, I, yeah. Ooh, I just, elevating somebody um, really quick <laughs> yeah it, it's funny you say that it, it almost it depends upon how much they want to screw it up by doing like a fast track but also you know you mentioned you know if they they have steiner i'm sorry i'm calling him steiner when the rumble because you know one of the top guys with the company again is is bruce pritchard again and Bruce Pritchard has been on the record several times on his podcast about how he was once upon a time pushing the idea of Uncle Scotty uh, winning the Royal Rumble the one year. He said he, he was always pushing this idea that you'd have Scott Steiner come in and enter number one and win the Royal Rumble and everything. And obviously they never did that. Um, Thank God. Yeah. Well, well we, and we, this would have been like when the Steiners had their brief run there in, in, in WWE in the, in the early 90s. So, okay. yeah, not, not when he was Big Papa Pump. Okay. But before that. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, when he could still actually do Free a Free mathematical pro, you know, pro. Yeah. We got it. Yeah. <laughs> and when he could still do a Frankensteiner and everything. Um, so, yeah, who the hell knows? I don't know what Pritchard thinks of, of uh, you know, Steiner, but um i guess Probably i could see very the, highly i i could see the connective tissue there so the potential but of course it's how much does vince actually listen and richard's always of course had the reputation of being a yes man uh as opposed to um pushing like his own ideas or, or whatever so um who the hell knows i mean i but yeah i would not of course resist the uh the prospect of Hey, this is WWE, and we always find a way to fuck it up. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what they're doing with Miz and Maurice, too. Yeah, I, um, I felt like we were going to get Edge and Beth Phoenix versus the two of them. I felt let's like have, let's, let's, have, let's have them get divorced on Raw, <laughs> uh, just so we can have more Miz and Mrs. episodes where. They're they talk about how it's just a program that they're working. Yeah. Pretty much. So fucking stupid. I'm sorry. Yeah, if they try to do the divorce angle, I'm going to be so disappointed because it's not going to work. People are not going to buy that shit. So You're going to cancel the reality show at that point. I think they're going to let, like, now they're going to, most likely now I think Liv is going to beat Becky at the day one. But why wouldn't you have just let her do it <laughs> on that episode of raw like if she wins at day mm -hmm. one it, it it's not as to me they've they've lessened it if she wins there so raw yeah it was like they still i they probably still think the paper use the best option for that whatever anymore no but i i totally agree and there was there was there was one time where they did something like that before where like they, like, they had two people they had a match they built up the one person as being like this like tremendous underdog that worked so hard for it, but then lost the match. But then they did a rematch and that person won the rematch, but nobody really seemed to give a shit as much. But I'm not remembering now who the hell that was. I know they've done it before. And so um 
It seems it almost seems as if yeah, we're we're headed down that same road. I yeah, I, this has and, a feeling. This this is me. I I don't. I I find it laughable that fucking Taz's kid outsold CM Punk for shirts. I find it laughable that of all the people in that wrestling that could be <laughs> the one that they sell the most shirts for, it's fucking Taz's kid who had one match and he looked fine, but I don't I don't see what everybody else saw with him either. Like I'm like, oh, I can't wait to watch this guy wrestle again. He didn't do anything. He did a couple hey. of basic moves. He did the Taz mission, and that's it. Hey, who the hell you think you are? You some kind of fucking mock, brother? You mock? <laughs> what do you think about my kid, man? My kid's gonna come over there. He's gonna fuck you up, man. And they can't even I, he, call he, it Taz Mission, he, so it's hilarious. <laughs> he, he did fine. He he had a decent match. I I just I I, I don't know. I just want to see more of him. I mean, the match was fine. Well, um, I, I I of course can only say one thing about Paz's kid. What the fuck is this? His hair is all over the place, man. Yeah, I, don't, I don't understand. Maybe that's. I could care less. I could care less about his hair. I just want to see what we could do in the ring right now. I mean, yeah, yeah no, it's kind of funny. It my, looks my, like pro- my yeah. My problem is he could be Brock Lesnar. When he's coming out with that fucking hairstyle, I can't fucking take him seriously. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I want to see more of him and see what he does with some other people. We'll see where he goes. He has potential, though. We'll see. He's not no fucking mock like you all are. <laughs> it is crazy how his shirt sold more. I, that's, I don't know. I, I Is it for Hook or is it for Taz? Like, I, it's I, I don't terrible, know. That's... It's a terrible shirt, too. It's just a white shirt that says Hook on it in black. It's not like the art department got creative. They just slapped a... <laughs> fucking t-shirt together and i'm like what the fuck like i i don't like i don't i already don't like him so i'm not like i already think he's an idiot so like i'm already like fuck this guy so he hasn't and, he hasn't done anything to be an idiot yet though he What's looks he like an be... idiot that's all he has to do he looks like an idiot i want to punch him in the face when I see him on TV. so I can't, I can't i can't believe i can't believe you don't know how his stir uh, sold i have my boy joey numbers down at the docks <laughs> He went and bought them all. Duh! I can't believe you people don't know this shit. And now you're like, it's it's fucking like you're lost. you're being Taz, and then you're being fucking Tony D'Angelo from fucking NXT, who I think is an idiot, also. So I'm giving D'Angelo a chance right now. He's all we'll see. a bunch of fucking mocks. <laughs> all of you, all mocks. It's all good. I mean, I don't mind D'Angelo. I, I, I just, I, I, I'll wait to. I, I didn't see NXT his NXT. Yeah, I, I didn't see his match and everything. But like I said, I just it's very hard for me to take somebody seriously <laughs> when they when they come out looking like that hairstyle. I mean, I'm like, obviously he could beat the shit out of me. That's not, you know, the such the the point or anything. It's just like wrestlers are always first and foremost judged on their look. Before they even get before they get into the ring, before they and put you know do a lock up or a headlock or anything, before they get on the mic and say a word, they're judged on their look. And when you come out with a fucking stupid ass looking hairstyle, um, you know it's it, it, it's 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 going to be detrimental to you in most cases, unless it's like you're playing it for comedy or you're playing it to to you know to to add to like a heelish character, but. If he's supposed to be like a heelish tough guy kind of thing. That hairstyle isn't helping sell that aspect of it. That's well, they were smart. <laughs> they were smart because they they debuted him in his like hometown essentially. So that was like his first match. Yeah. He's from like around there. So I'm I'm he's fighting the whatever. He's fighting the one of the I call him the the uh, Otis of. He's fighting one of those guys from AEW. There's this tag team that's like two Otises, basically. He's fighting one of those guys next week or something. So we'll see how he does in that match. And mm, he just that'll be he, interesting. He, he used to come out with those guys and he didn't do anything. I think that was my problem. Is he would just come out with Taz's group and he never did anything. He just fucking stood there. He never talked. He never did anything. So I was like, what the fuck is there? Why I don't need to see him if he's not going to do anything. So I think that that already aggravated me that he never did anything. He just came out, stood there, 
and he was Taz's kid. So that's why he was coming out because he was Taz's kid. That's what it felt like. Oh, we got to get this guy's face on TV because it's Taz's kid. <laughs> he didn't do anything for months. He just came out and stood there and never did anything. So that worked for China for a while. What? Mm, that's kind of good. Out, just, just coming out and standing there, just looking intimidating. But yeah, she's yeah. a little bit more intimidating looking than this kid is, though. <laughs> yes, yes. Kind of looked like she had a dick. So she was way more intimidating. Like she, she was very intimidating. <laughs> Well, she, she she did always say that she wanted to wrestle the men and not the women, so. Oh, my God. <laughs> she, she, she did want to be paid as much as Austin was. <sighs> I mean, the, I'm, I'm not going to make my other comment because I've seen stuff. I'm just, I'm just going to leave it be. No, I'm not, I'm, not try, I'm not trying to pick on China, but again, like I said, no, I'm, no. Doing, I'm doing that weekly rewatch where in May of 97, she's still in that, like, you know, you know like very intimidating uh just standing there with like the arms folded until she just like goes and beats the shit out of flash funk uh you know routine like you know she's before she started having any kind of enhancements done so you know th this was like you yeah, know original know. Th this is original untouched china if you will so i was gonna make another comment that was a lot different <laughs> but that's okay i'm gonna steer away from it I I made a left hand turn to uh, not make the right hand turn down that road. So we're yeah, let's, let's let's not speak ill of the dearly departed. So oh, it's nothing. It's nothing bad per se. But no. I mean, you know, just no, no, nothing bad per se. Per se, you know, it's just a sexual innuendo that uh, you know, you know, only Jeremy would appreciate. I'm only kidding. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just not going to go down that road. Oh, well, I, I, I'm sure we all cared about this. Yes. Darren Williams. Darren Williams beat Frank Gore via split decision. <laughs> really? That? Well, no, I'm not going to say that really surprises me. It, it says the guy writing it up here on ESPN says, "Make no mistake, it was a legitimate and entertaining fight. It only was three rounds. It was an you know, it was an exhibition. So yeah. Um, so on on <laughs> Freddie Prince's podcast this week, he told a story he called the ice storm. Uh oh. He said he had to drive from Nashville to Atlanta, and he said he was with a makeup artist because he said he stayed later and got caught." Usually he would catch a ride with somebody when he first started. This is he said this is before he got to fly on the jet all the time. So he said that they during the trip, the first thing he said is he said at some point they saw a fucking tree, a big huge tree that must that something happened to it because the fucking tree was on fire. He said the tree was like uprooted and it was on fire. And he he wanted to go see what the fuck was going on. And she was like, No, you're not going over there. And he was just like, Wow, what the fuck happened? It's a fucking uprooted tree in a snowstorm. It doesn't usually lightning and stuff. So he said it probably didn't get hit by lightning. So he couldn't figure out what happened to the tree, but he wasn't allowed. The makeup artist got mad at him because he was trying to go see what happened. And so he said when they got to Atlanta, there was ice everywhere. There was ice all over. Like there was like, you know, half an inch of ice on the road, everything. So Oof, that's horrible. When he... So he said when, they got, when they got to the hotel, it was down this really big, steep hill. And he's like, if I drive my car down this hill, I'm going into the hotel. So he's like, I do not want the headline next morning to say, Freddie Prince Jr. drives through hotel. <laughs> I'm afraid that he's drunk or something. So he said that they parked at the top of this hill and he told him and the fucking girl went down the hill on their fucking suitcases. <laughs> There's and, no, there was no other possible way for uh, them to get to the He hotel. said that it was like two o'clock in the morning. He said that they had asked somebody for directions to the hotel and they, he went back to the guy and said, is there any other hotels we can stay in around here? And he's like, no, you got to go to that one. So he said that when they went down and he said the makeup artist did not want to do this but he said when they went down the hill it went fine she kind of veered off 
to the left a little bit, but he said his basically went right up to the fucking door of the hotel. And he said that the people were watching them trying to figure out how they were going to do this. Like from, they were watching from down Probably the hill. fucking laughing their asses <laughs> off at those two. I'm going to say they got to be like cheering them on or taking bets as to who were going to die for <laughs> Who's going to get fucked up first? I wonder how they, I, I wanted him to tell the story about how they got back up the hill. Because part of me was like, how did you get back up the fucking hill? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he he had to go to a show. They, they, called, a, they, they, they called a taxi the next morning? <laughs> so he then, he then like, he was like telling story about his promo class. And he did, he did tell a side story. And you guys can find this like, me telling some of my friends if you weren't watching wrestling back then but he said one night they were out at a bar and everybody was drunk and they that's where they came up with the kung fu naki thing is at a fucking bar when a bunch of them were drunk it was like shane mcmahon and whatever and he said that they were doing karaoke and they were singing like kung fu naki (laughs) um i am not at all surprised to hear a story like that instead of kung fu fighting they were saying kung fu yes yes and 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 about uh a gimmick like that yeah that's uh he actually said that our truth wrote a song where they said kung fu naki and said like he wrote a whole song (laughs) oh from our truth i 1000 percent believe that shit because so I can see him doing that. That was an interesting side thing. He also here here's something interesting too. That this is very Vince McMahon. This sounds like something Vince McMahon would say, and it maybe makes more sense. Um, he said that when he was there, the Usos had just like kind of gotten there, and Freddie said he liked the Usos and he was trying to help get them over. And he said Vince McMahon was like, "Fuck tag team wrestling. I got to pay four guys to be in the ring instead of two. I saw something about that, yeah. That. So that's Vince McMahon's whole approach to tag team wrestling is I got to pay four guys to be in the ring instead of two. Wow. <laughs> I pay four guys to be in the ring instead of two. That's not good shit. <laughs> I'm 76 years old now. I don't have the time for this shit. <sighs> so it's all about the money. Well, and he, it. uh, he it's said all it wanted, about the money. In uh, one of his promo classes, he said he had, he had, there were rules in the promo class. There were two rules. If it was a male and a female going back and forth, they were not allowed to make out. And they were, they were not allowed to physically harm each other. They could say whatever they wanted, but they were not allowed to punch and kick, and there was no making out. So he okay, said... Okay, okay. Real, real quick again, I'm sorry. A rule of promo class Yes. was no making out. Yes. Between a male and a female. Between a male and a female. The thought hadn't occurred to me until just now. I'm supposed to be cutting a promo. Why would I think about making out with the woman? Well, because they used to do this activity, he mm-hmm. said, during his promo class where somebody would say a line and you have to re- keep repeating the same line, but you can change like the way you're delivering it and stuff. So he said people would start getting angry. And sometimes when you have males and females, when they start getting angry, they get closer and closer together and the pheromones start. And sometimes that happens. And that makes sense to me that that could happen so because you had to whoever like stopped saying the line lost because he said the first time he did it with the Miz he pissed the Miz off and the Miz lost because he changed the line so he said that it was Natty and Harry Smith oh (laughs) and he said that they they got pretty it got pretty heated and he said that Harry Smith said something to her like you you don't belong here or something like something you know probably because she's a girl or female or whatever and he said that she hit him harder 
that he's ever seen somebody hit somebody in his life. He said she opened palm, smacked the fucking shit out of Harry. And he said Harry sat there and laughed in her face. Wow. <laughs> and these are cousins. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wonder how Christmas was for those guys that year. <laughs> wow. Cause it's going at it. He also Ooh. said the guy, the guy that played Darren Young was cutting a promo with William Regal one time, and it's like Darren Young hadn't come out yet. And oh. they hit William Regal hit a nerve. And Ed, Freddie said that Darren cut this like impassioned promo, but in his head, Freddie's like, Darren's gay. <laughs> <laughs> so he could tell from the promo, like just the way he was reacting to stuff. He said Regal was awesome. He said Regal is one of the greatest like wrestling minds he's ever met. He said Regal helped him. He had no issues. He told him who to avoid and who to like. He said Regal's a real like good person. Yeah, I've heard of good things about him. A lot of people like him. He really everybody wants to help everybody. Everybody but Goldberg. Yes. And that's Whatever. that's actually one of the things that it's funny that Freddie Prince said that that was one of the things that he like remembered about regal is that regal was thought goldberg was trash basically so i'm like sweet regal gets bonus points for that so anybody that <laughs> knew goldberg was garbage out the gate and yeah. regal wasn't afraid of him like regal and jericho were like two of the guys that just weren't afraid of goldberg so well i wanted to think there was somebody like regal who like start off as like a bare knuckle brawler and shit like that would would be afraid. Yeah, he's of not going to get two shits. Like okay, yeah, he's a, he's a big muscular, roided uh, former football player. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, why would why why would he be uh, scared? You know, uh, the only reason is Goldberg is a black belt or Muay Thai or whatever the fuck it is. Yes, Bret Hart. Still. Bret, Bret. Bret Hart's head will attest to that. <laughs> yeah, it will. <laughs> yes, it will. Don't hurt it's... me, Bill. Uh, <laughs> whatever you say, Brett, your head's going into the fifth row. <laughs> in your yeah, career, cool. In your, in your, yeah, yeah in your, in your career will be over because you'll be stupid enough to not realize you have a fucking concussion. Yeah, that was interesting. I saw some of that, those biographies. There's some several of them that I missed, and I caught the last half hour of Bret Hart's. I'm like, yeah, let me watch this. Yep, doctor said you shouldn't be doing shit. You're so concussed, but he was still going out there doing shit, which didn't yep. help. But, and uh, Brett's still, and Brett still got a hard on for Hulk Hogan. Oh my God, yeah. Anytime you can take a pot shot at Hogan, he'll fucking do it. <laughs> he right, he's asked care. a question. He was asked a question, and he and he brought Hogan and his hatred for Hogan into it. And it's Not like, working. yeah, and it's like, Brett, but I love you. It's like Brett, I love you. Don't you have to let go of the bitterness at some point? Because uh, it, it it makes you not a fun person to be around if you're just going to be so bitter all the time so I, I don't know i just i found it it's like you know just like anytime like i see something like i see a headline or mentions Bret hart and hulk hogan in the same headline i go oh jesus what now i know it's like you <laughs> what happened to you with the screw job was like 10 times worse than anything you've done with hogan in your whole fucking wrestling career for god's sakes but see i get yeah, excited yeah, yeah. I get you want excited to take pot shots that. Anytime anybody shits on Hogan, I get excited. So I'll go read it and I'll enjoy it. So well, well my point, my point I'm to that is overzealous is that, at this point. Like, who gives a fuck? They're yeah, both and, shit. And, and, my, and my point is that for all of his faults, and we know there are many. Anytime it seems like that Hogan has had opportunities to take shots at Brett, he he just doesn't anymore. He he's basically said, I, I don't want to. I don't want to talk bad about Brett anymore. You know, he doesn't care. It's 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 just kind of funny how Hogan's the one who takes the high road when we know he's a pretty terrible person. So 
I just find it. I just find it uh, ironic. In well, a, that just yeah, maybe in, in, in a pretty ironic way. That that just maybe that that person that you know that's obviously the person that that Brett has the most issues with, and and maybe he is never going to get past that. But I get it because I'm like that to some degree too. So I get it. Like, I I, I guess I mean, what, what is it? Is it that because like Michaels and Vince apologized to him and Hogan hasn't? Is that what it is? It's the I. I mean, I guess it, I guess if I were to like be like interviewing Bret Hart and like the topic of Hogan came up, I guess I would just want to, as the interviewer, say something to the effect of like, "All right, Bret, you obviously hold a lot of animosity for Hulk Hogan, but you don't seem to have as much animosity anymore for Vince McMahon and Shawn Michaels, who arguably did worse to you in terms of your career." And blah blah blah. Is there anything that could ever happen that would make you bury the hatchet with Hulk Hogan? You know, just. Just be kind of curious to see. Or be like, know. what's the specific reason you truly ate Hogan? I just want to know, because he's yeah. always like, like walked around that thing. He's like, oh, well, he was doing this, yeah. but it's like, but it's like, it's like that. His reasons are, are are like are geared towards others. Like, what did you like? You, I understand you care for the business, but like, what did he personally do to you? Like, I'm just kind of curious. Like, well, is at the point like you guys are two old fucks? Who gives a shit? I mean, it was supposedly the whole thing with what happened in 1993, you know, with Hogan winning the belt at WrestleMania, and then supposedly the plan was for Hogan to drop it back to him at SummerSlam, and he refused to. And then supposedly when Brett came to WCW, Hogan still treated him like he was second rate and, and you know, wasn't worthy of getting in the ring with him. And, and they did have one match against each other, I think, on like a Nitro, but it was like it was like a setup thing when they were doing like this the nwo split where it was like it was like a lure to get like savage to the ring so Hogan could start beating on savage and then brett started joining in with hogan and beating on savage i i think that's what it was that part of it was something like that yeah i'm not i'm not 100 on on the memories with that but um, the old feuds are old that's what i say yeah, they're boring like, at this point I, I would i would bring up brett's book because i remember reading in brett's book where he was talking about everything that happened then um the way I read it, and again, maybe I read it wrong and he could correct me, was that his conclusion was that Vince had manipulated both of them into thinking things were going to go a certain way. And then when he was confronted by both of them, he was like, well, gee, you know, Brett, uh, I didn't say that's what we were going to do. That's what you heard. And, you know, he seemed to be taking pity on Hogan during it because he mentioned that when they left, when they were leaving, like Hogan just looked all dejected and shit and it was like was it because hogan was realizing that vince was trying to put him out to pasture again or I, so uh, but it was like brett almost seemed to be taking pity on hogan uh for that uh but again it's again if that's not what he was actually saying maybe i need to go reread it i don't know uh it's like yeah again then then correct me brett yeah <laughs> it just I, I i just find it kind of funny because it's like fucking hogan and flair are friends now and they seem to hate each other for a good long while there you know flair yeah, got, flair, flair got pissed for when like hogan was like belt whipping david in that one nitro segment and shit like that but i mean the, the, flair and bischoff get along now yes uh so it, it it seems like brett's one of the very few people out there who just wants to hang on to his bitterness and his and his and his hatred of others and it, those aren't those just aren't those aren't attractive qualities as you get older um in, in a lot of ways if you let them define you if you constantly bring them up you know so if you bury them enough and you don't let them like dominate your personality then you know fine but it's like if, if you go walking around like like if you wake up in the morning and you're just like uh what's this asshole doing today that's you're not going to do a lot yourself you know for yourself so it's funny in a not so great way no absolutely it's like the old rivalries are old rivalries you know it's just kind of like yeah you just kind of see it and it's like ah, guy guys you know i mean you want to hold a grudge be my guest hold a fucking grudge but I kind of see yeah. a lot of it anymore because I, I just don't want to read some of the old shit in regards to that. I'm just kind of yeah. past it. 
it's, <laughs> there's a lot uh, of, there's more else going on in wrestling than to worry about two two old fogies fucking worrying about their you know feud from 25 years ago or animosity or you know envy envy for them or whatever the fucking case may be at this point yeah and it was like jim Cornette said the only thing that he could ever fault brett for would be taking himself too seriously and it's like yeah here we are you know 25 years later and brett's still taking it very seriously so um it's like your legacy's intact you know <laughs> see uh, god damn it shane started posting more stuff and <laughs> my well, internet went like what internet went out so sorry shane i your posts are just popping up for me now since my internet was like you, going in and out if you could pick and we i, I i'm guessing that there's going to be a different answer from each of us on this if you oh, could pick, hold on hold on real quick shane goes ask joe to take off his hat joe's hair equals hook's hair <laughs> 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 oh, you don't want to know what's hiding underneath that. Thing. <laughs> uh, oh, shit. Uh, he said Regal's a man's man. <laughs> All right. Man. If you guys could pick one, like, five-year period of wrestling that's your favorite. Oh, Jesus Christ. You and these questions. I got to fucking think about these. Yes. Oh. Well, That'll be, like, that two weeks from now. This this one's like easier than what I was going to ask you, Joe. So you got the easy one. So got the easy one. What's yeah. the other one you were gonna ask? The other one was gonna be multiple parts. Oh gee, just fucking say it. Just get it over with. Well, I was that one that one the, the other one you might need to think about. I was gonna ask you because I've already asked several other people. I wanted to know who your wrestler of the year, your tag team, your female wrestler, and your match of the year would be. And I've already asked several other people and got an answer so match is hard for me because i there, there's matches i like i have to go back and, and right you're those. zach um, zach said the same thing so that um, one best five year span yes wrestling yeah i think I, I i'd have to say 88 to 92 because those were probably what i would say were my formative years and looking back i think there's enough that you could go to both major organizations from and and still be entertained uh to a large extent i can't really say say like 96 to 2000 because we know that by like mid 99 or so wcw just became an absolute shit show and pushing that a few years later well then you're cutting off like the beginning of the nwo and and austin's run and and things like that and then you're getting into the era where WWE didn't really have any competition, and we know that their that their product started to go down a bit when WCW closed its doors. So, as much as I entered, was like 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 WWE in 2000 was like that was probably like one of my favorite WWE years. Um, Shane, but, Shane so, so posted in the 90s. Shane posted 97 to 2002? Question mark. I mean, again, that's that's not a bad pick. But like I said, it's you know you're cutting you cut off the beginning of the NWO there, and you're getting too much into shit WCW, and then no competition WWE. So that's the way I look at it. Um, fuck. See, I'm mm. I'm 2015 and 2019 for me. So because of NXT. So, wait, what was your, your periods again? Two th mine's 2015 and 2020, I guess, pre pandemic. So, 2015 till the pandemic, I guess. So, I said 88 to 92. So, like the calendar years of 88, 89, 90. I'm going to go 2015 to 2020, but it's not going to be the same reason as AJ's. I mean, I, I mean, you can say New Japan in there. You, there. There's multiple things that good that have happened in multiple places, not so much WWE, but AEW also started during that window too. So. Mm. But for me, it's, it's NXT. NXT is my favorite, like wrestling, like ever. Like I'll take, and, and, 
the character wise, the attitude era was better, like character wise and promo wise, but wrestling wise. I don't think I've seen, there's not been a better five year stint than 2015 and 2020 as far as the in ring product. So it's better now than it was then. So I, I will argue all night into the next day about that. So, well, I mean, you bring up a good point about the attitude era there too. There was a lot of shit wrestling during the attitude yes. era. Great, great characters, great promos, even great, pretty good storylines, but the in ring yeah. product. Yeah, right. And you had a lot of like two minute TV matches and, and bullshit like that. And, you know, you had a lot, of course, Jerry Springer, distasteful, you know, Vince Russo, Ed Ferrara, pen bullshit, you know, like, you know, choppa choppa, yo pee pee. And, uh, <laughs> uh, may, 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 you know, giving birth to a ham. And, <laughs> well, actually, no way. I think that happened after Russo and Ferrara left now that I think about it. But it was still terrible. Yeah. Matter. No, yeah, it was so oh, terrible. But what I was going to say is, like, I mentioned how like 2000 was one of my favorite WWE years. Not so coincidentally, the fact that Russo and Ferrara had left, you know, <laughs> so that uh, they got a little more focus. And, and it was Kyle kind of interesting because Austin was out most of that year, but it's where they really solidified between Rock and Triple H, and they started pushing like the Hardys and the Dudleys and Edge and Christian, and then the Radicals came in and. You had Jericho start to be, you know, get, get really over during that that year too. So, you know, it was like it was. You still had like a lot of like top names from like the year or two before, but you also had like the guys that you saw were going to be like the next wave of guys. So, what was your what would be your reason for picking that time frame, Joe? Um, it's either be twenty fourteen to twenty nineteen or twenty. It's 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 in yeah. the same thing. I mean, that, I, that's my I, view. I. I I watched TNA. I still watch TNA. I watched TNA. They had, there's a lot of people there on there now. They're in a different promotions doing well. It's TNA, Ring of Honor, and New Japan. I subscribed to New Japan for a long time. So I saw a lot of their, a lot of their shows that Access would show like months later. Um, I mean, that's kind of like the Bullet Club started in 2013, but it really didn't like, take off to like 2014 ish to be honest with you and then aj appeared in 2015 and then all the rest of them were kind of just that was just new japan which is awesome just because of how new japan is and the wrestling the in product is, is fantastic um even lucha underground to be honest with you but i think they kind of ended it in 20 uh, i think it was still around a little bit there i watched that and that was some good product you know Phoenix, uh, you know, Lucha Brothers from there and, and other people. Um, Johnny Ring Anderson of, wrestled there. Ring, know, Ring, Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor was RIP. Yeah. Um, Ring of Honor was still producing a lot of good wrestlers, a lot of good talent in ring stuff. You know, I know a lot of people stopped watching TNA, but EC3 was there and there was a lot of good storylines, a lot of stuff going on over there too. In ring product was good. Um, and then NXT. You know, those were major things like WWE, whatever, Raw and SmackDown is <laughs> what it is for the past 10 fucking years for, in that fact. But those NXT and, and New Japan, Ring of Honor, I mean, TNA for me, most, I, I watched all that. So it was all that was just great in ring if wrestling. You, if, you take, if you take AJ away from the main roster, I'm pretty sure just everybody I like is from NXT. If you take AJ out of the equation, Everybody else that I'm I like on the main roster was in NXT at one point or another. So like that's the tie for because it's all NXT people that I that I and, that are. And the other major thing is the women's wrestling. Yes, that that that's you're right. That's that's been important that we the four it's horse the women's women. wrestling all over the place. So you know there's 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 some females who wrestle in triple a in mexico and i've seen that are just crazy phenomenal but there i don't think there'll be it's not they're not they're really good talents but just not they're never they'll never really fit in the wwe I mean, they atmosphere. didn't even know that's what the do, thing they didn't know what to do with tara valkyrie so what they're not going to know what to do with any of the rest of them <laughs> no so. and that's just horrible in the same in, in another aspect too they screwed the, they 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 bit the pooch on that one they fucked up I mean, 
I think they bit the pooch on Chelsea Green even. I think she's yep. pretty good. I think they dropped the ball. They didn't even give her a chance because she got hurt. And they just said, fuck you. Yep. Yeah, yeah fuck you. Her out the door. But we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get rid of all these other people, but we're gonna put Mandy more Mandy Rose on fucking television <laughs> every fucking week. Fuck you, Shane. Shane, fuck you with this comment. So <laughs> So I think I've told you guys it was always a running joke about Joey Anderson old at my job, right? So I was one of the older guys there, but still in better shape than most of them. Um, J- Shane Futz, Joe's best wrestling period is 100 BC with actual gladiators when they went when he witnessed it live. <laughs> so I used to start joking around, yeah, I'm 450 years old, bitches. That's how old I am. <laughs> That's why I say that shit sometimes. I'm hundred four. I'm gonna be 145 next year and whatnot. It's all Shane's fault. I'm blaming him. Joe Joe's Wolverine fought in the you know all the uh this, all, the, all should, the wolves from like the beginning of X-Men Origins. <laughs> we should probably I wrap did, this it up. It's been a really long podcast, guys. Yeah, well, well I, mean, I mean if you want to wrap it up, I don't I don't do that these days anymore. You know? I mean, I don't, <laughs> we've, we've been ha- we've been having fun because you know you know the man hasn't been here to uh to uh you know lay, lay the hammer down and try Watch to like, you know, and try and, and try to run try, try to run things you know try, try try to run things and uh you know act like he's like the like like the head of the program or whatever it is you know <laughs> Uh, oh my that, god! That hasn't been here. That hasn't been here tonight. So um, <laughs> he's not going to hear me say any of these things, right? I mean, of course he is. Nah, I can't wait because nah. now this nah, is going to be like when Joe when Joe ripped into you, Pat. Jeremy's going to do it next week now. So <laughs> well, yeah, okay. Now you do realize why I've been doing that, right? Because you, you, you keep making reference to the fact that the most watched show was the one that I wasn't on. <laughs> well, I've never <laughs> made reference to that. Other people have. Well, I don't recall saying that, oh, the show was great tonight because AJ wasn't on it. I don't think I've said that. You've yeah. said it privately, buddy. <laughs> I have not, and you cannot prove that. I'm talking about AJ has said it privately. Oh. Oh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> you dissing me, man? You fucking mock, brother. You want to come over to Red Hook and say that? You have to do Joey mean, numbers. We were we were talking about rap on that oh, one. Shit. That's not something you really know anything about. So that was the perfect one for you not to be on. <laughs> hey, I know a lot of things about rap music. Okay, I know that it's <laughs> called rap, and that it doesn't have a W at the beginning of it. Um, <laughs> I know that there's uh, there's that white guy uh, who looks M&M like M and not spelled with an A. Who, 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 looks, who looks like who looks like one of the scrawniest guys imaginable, and I don't know how he survived in the world of rap. Um, uh, I know there's those guys from. He was protected by a doctor. I, I know that there's those guys from Straight Outta Compton. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that scrawny white guy has a doctor as his, as his friend. Yeah, who was one of those guys from Straight Outta Compton? And I know that there was. Uh, I know there was that guy who's uh, the the little big guy, right? What? Was thing, little, little 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 big guy. He's dead. He got he got he got shot. Notorious B.I.G. Yeah. Oh, it. Little, okay. <laughs> I didn't know if he was going a different route, like Easy E or some shit. I don't remember. I didn't know what he was doing there. Well, the little big guy would be Bushwick <laughs> Bill from the Ghetto Boys because he was a midget. Well, wasn't he called Big E Smalls? Yeah, so but we still reversing... generally refer to him as Notorious B.I.G. I, mean, that's I, I know, but I was just like reversing the names and trying to make it show like I didn't know shit. Yeah, obviously I don't know shit about rap. Well, that was I'm, a white, I'm, I'm a white guy who went to, I'm a white guy who went to high school in a rural mountain town in uh, eastern Pennsylvania where I think there were maybe uh, you know 10 black kids in the whole I mean, school I, you know so rap music just not my thing it didn't speak to me you know not not anything I can relate to so it's not necessarily anything I can relate to either it was just the music I liked so yeah I like you know 
music that doesn't come out of electronic mixing board so and i'm not saying i dislike all rap there's some rap i do like there's a lot that i could just do without you know so. music's music's very subjective so there's not really a right yeah. song it's just your yeah. personal preference yeah. so. it, it absolutely is subjective so so are we done yeah i guess hey you know i know we haven't i know we haven't been i know we haven't been saying do drop in for a while but i don't think we're going to be able to keep saying that anyway because i think i heard something they're going to change her name back to her indie name or something we can still say do drop in though it doesn't i, I yeah. mean yeah i guess it just yeah we can well mean we it, can make but... it our own just don't Pat, be do you dropping have any no more, poops do you have any right. more parting shots for jeremy before we're done <laughs> um Mm -hmm. Anything so, else you can say to draw his ire? So he had a family thing tonight. That's why he couldn't be on. Yeah, I think he has some family stuff going on. It's like pre-Christmas time. Family Christmas stuff. party or something. Yeah, man, he's got to get his priorities in order. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I went and spent oh time. I, I went and spent time with family today, but I was here. Shane goes G baby from Hardball. Ah, I know what he's nice. Saying, buddy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Can, what else can I say about Jeremy? Uh, uh, nah, I can't do anything. So, I mean, it's a week. It's a week before Christmas. I'm not, not trying to be a dick. We're, so yeah, we're definitely not. We're, we decide we're not doing one next weekend, right? So, I mean, I'm gonna be so, at my. I'm going to be at my sister's next Saturday till I don't know when, but I don't know when I'll be home next Saturday night. And I don't think doing a podcast on Christmas night is something that. No, no, no. no. It would so, have to be Sunday. <clears throat> no, we're not doing anything else. So we will not be on for anyone that's listening for the next two weeks. We will be back at the podcast the weekend of the 8th of January. Where we'll have plenty that of stuff to talk about. Yes, and we'll make it. A, we'll make it a five-hour show. That's what we're gonna do. That's, we'll be able to talk about day one and college football bowl season and continued That's NFL true. shenanigans and. Uh, we know, should be. We should be is well COVID, rested. Is COVID going to kill us all? And you know all the fun stuff. I think the aliens will first, but that's my opinion. So yeah. whatever. Whatever, good evening, good night, good morning, and we'll see you on the next pod, whatever Jeremy says. <laughs> He's not on, so we don't have to say what Jeremy says. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll just do the Truman Show version. Like, you know, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Oh, my God. All right. We're stopping. <laughs> uh, everyone have a grand evening. Toodles. Have a great holiday season. Yeah, do your best. <laughs>